keeps changing my mind, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's working. Yeah. Third gender is akin to slavery. Well, now I'm pro trans and pro slavery because he, <laughs> he, he, he reali- I realized yeah. there was a saying. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. There's a correlation yeah. between yeah. the two. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's watch Steven Crowder, a man who also hates women, just like me. And unlike Jonah Hill, or maybe just like Jonah Hill, as a matter of fact, in a, an abusive relationship with his wife. Do you believe it's plausible that Steven Crowder is just a monster? Uh-huh. Oh my God. God her saying Wait, it. Candace Owens literally said Jonah Hill was doing the right thing, but... Fucking was ripping into Steven Crowder when he was abusing his wife. Hmm, interesting. Candace Owens, uh, uh, many, many nuances there. Maybe she's just like me because <laughs> I think Steven Crowder is abusive. There's not enough information. Yeah. On, on... Surprised, that, surprised that she didn't say Steven Crowder was objectively in the right. I wonder why. I wonder why she didn't say that. Um. So you agree with Steven Crowder on, I mean, Candace on all points? No, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't agree with Candace Owens when she said Jonah Hill is in the right. What the <laughs> fuck is happening? Uh, oh, my God. There's nothing I love more than bad stand-up comedy. Nothing fascinates me as much as watching some overconfident drunk idiot get up in front of a packed crowd on open mic night and just letting it rip. Yeah, you want me to out? We want to fucking buy set. You think I'm going to be a girl? Kind of you know it's almost incredible how bad you are at this. <laughs> I don't think enough people appreciate the genuine level of intellect, timing, and planning that goes into crafting a well thought out joke. It's a talent, and it's not hard to see who has it and who doesn't. I'll bake some Mexican cookies, and you go over there, I'm like, what the f- is Mexican cookie? What are you talking about? It's like a chocolate chip with salsa all over it? What are you talking about? What are you- not everyone is cut out for such an industry, but that doesn't keep them from trying. So I drove here. Notice a really disturbing trend in cars nowadays. I don't know if you folks have seen these uh, dream catchers. Is this, is this thing is it working? Okay, thank you, sir. If your stand-up career doesn't work out, that's okay. You can always pivot to selling overpriced cool. mugs and that. t-shirts that totally don't have slurs written on them. The Che Guevara socialism is for figs t-shirt. If you found yourself spewing incoherent drivel to make up for an evident lack of talent, okay. To be fa- to be fair, his Jank Uger skit was objectively funny. It was probably the only funny time. Found yourself he- spewing in Have you seen that? That's this? Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. So th- this Stephen Crowder. Okay. Fun fact. And I said this like back when I was at TYT. Fun fact: Stephen Crowder literally built a career off of shitting on the Young Turks. He was another one of those like orbiter uh, haters like unhinged uh, TYT haters that basically built a career for himself. There was an entire cottage industry around like back in the day, uh, pre-Gamergate and like post-Gamergate. Back in the day, there was an entire fucking segment of like right-wing content creators that uh, made a living for themselves by shitting on the Young Turks. Okay? That's all they did. Um, I have my own version of this as well. Some of them still shit on me uh, from back when I was at the Young Turks as well. That's why they always, you can always distinct, like you can always figure out who they are when they come into the chat and go, uh, Jenk's nephew. I bet you don't serve top of the hour ad breaks for three minutes. I bet, I bet Jenk's nephew, but they're wrong. I do serve a top of the hour ad break. That's three minutes long. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or free with a Twitch Prime. Or by getting gifted a sub if you're lucky. Okay? Get fucking fucked. Yeah, Brown Fabio insult era. They used to call me Brown Fabio, which is weird because like... What does that mean? Oh, you had long hair? No, I didn't. They were just saying like I'm a model. Yeah, that's not an insult. Just saying you're hot. I know, dude. They were saying I was like an airhead sexy guy, which is weird because Fabio now is like a right-wing commentator. (laughs) So I I bet they fucking think he's really smart now. Did you hear he killed killed a bird with his head? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like on a loose? roller, yeah. on a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, oh, I do. I do remember that, dude. He's so hot. Uh, anyway, he he has a very strong and large head, just like myself. <laughs> Shut up, Axel. Thank <laughs> you for the five. Get the subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Here's the three minute ad break now. 
apparent drivel to make up for an evident lack of talent, uh, then your name might be Steven Crowder. A man who refers to underage girls as slutty, tweets about wanting to have sex with his <laughs> mom, I guess, and threatens his pregnant wife when he thinks no one is watching. I love you, but Steven, Steven, your beast is sick. Your beast is sick. Watch it. Watch it. Steven I love was that. once a leading figure Watch it. of the online conservative so, yeah. movement, respected by his peers and adored by his audience, until a series of allegations made by former friends, family, and colleagues tarnished his good name, even in the eyes of fans. His own comment sections have gone from endearing words of support it doesn't work for to me either. Disdain, just over the past month alone. But if you've been following Steven as long as I have, then you know these instances are just as much horrifying as they are consistent with his public persona. A wannabe comedian who failed so hard at his craft that he sought out alternative so means to fulfill his incessant really bad, need to yeah. be liked. Being paid millions to sow chaos and contribute to what- Like, I, I love comedy, okay? I do. And, you know, I'm coming out as a, as a fan of comedy, okay? So, let me tell you something. Sometimes, if like a right-wing dude has like a funny moment, okay? I'll hand it to them. I'll be like, you know, I fucking hate this guy, but this was pretty funny. Even Crowder has never had one of those oh, moments. No. I guess with the exception of the jank skit that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. That was like the last time he was like kind of funny. Was everything about him is so insecure. Like the, the gun props all over yeah. his... He has like, he wears like a holster while he's no, sitting dude, there. That's what dance. real men do, brother. You don't understand. What makes political spaces so poisonous in the first place. But before we get to all of that, we do have a sponsor, the Spoke Post. The Spoke Post. Unfortunately, back to this guy. I've actually known about Steven Crowder for a long time. Considering when I was 14, I used to watch Steven's videos. Oh, no. I, I know, I know. Okay, don't, don't come for me yet. Let me explain. You need to I was brought up no. in a Christian conservative household, so. and when I was or given no, internet no, access, I, I wanted to watch somebody who said things I was used to hearing regarding guns, climate change, and Obama. Obama. Not that I actually understood any of those issues, but at 14, I didn't care about challenging my perspective on the world. I wanted somebody who would reinforce it, someone who would validate it, and Steven Crowder was that. Steven's shallow dichotomy of Republican good, Democrat bad. Satisfied the confirmation bias I was at the time searching for. And that's ultimately one of the things Steven is best at. Presenting a right-leaning perspective in a way that's easy for the youth to digest. In fact, he's long been accredited for putting a young face on conservatism, which is different from the old white guy club that people see too often. Slightly at younger according white to guy. Chris Lash, <laughs> a friend of Steven's and husband of NR. That's awesome. Yeah, well. That's wait. No, Dana Loesch and local psycho who wants Dana Loesch's husband looks like that. That's kind of awesome, dude. I mean, Dana Loesch is is a cutie. Good for him. He yeah. Compared he definitely, gun owners he definitely to punched rape victims, up. Dana Lash. Another writer critical of Stephen echoed a similar sentiment when he told the Daily Beast in 2013, Stephen's being promoted because he provides a very good face for the right wing to reassure its older generation that 20-somethings don't really support gay marriage and aren't concerned about income inequality. In the beginning, Stephen carved out a niche for himself where he could be easily seen as a more modern breed of conservative, while still very much holding the same views as an older generation of pundits that were being increasingly seen as out of touch. Stephen could reach young people in a way that Glenn Beck and Rush Limbaugh no longer could. 866 gold line. My N-word. <laughs> what? Really... Because Stephen wasn't strictly a political guy. That's all, no, he that's, actually that's denounced crazy. that label that's from awesome. the very beginning. That would I reach did not, a young audience. I did not know yeah. that that's, he did that. That's wild. Stephen Crowder has always been a self-described cultural person, whatever that means, and would rather think of himself first and foremost as an actor and, of course, comedian. Sorry, but I'm making you watch a stand-up with me. If I had to see it, so do you, motherfucker. Oh, please. <laughs> If you take the Greyhound bus, you're ugly, but if you're ugly, you take the Greyhound bus. <laughs> Joy Behar is so mind-numbingly stupid <laughs> that you could be sitting across from her, talking with her, he's and so not even having the in same his comedy. conversation. I think that's what he's trying to... Is he making that his joke? This debt is getting out of control. I don't think that we should be passing it down to our children. I know! Like my ex-husband never used to wash his feet! <laughs> <laughs> No, I 
I mean, I'm just saying that, you know, we're passing a debt down onto our children that they can- And I know I love blueberry pancakes! Keep in mind, this is the kind of stuff he whips out when he what? really needs a laugh. Well, that are his nuts, apparently, but we'll get to that later. This might shock you, but Stephen isn't exactly known for a comedy that challenges the way we think. Oh, I love this one. Biden, sharks, doo -doo -doo -doo, this was actually funny. Biden, yeah, yeah, this was fire. Yeah, oh, okay, was he's being, he's being yeah. a hater. Yeah, I like this. Because he did shart. Yeah. And also, it's funny to do this. It's so bad. This is one of those where it's like it's so bad it loops around and is good again. Yeah. Where like all of his other shit is like so try hard and so unfunny that you can't even look at it and be like, well, this is so bad it's funny. Most of his act consists of making pretty mundane observations. You guys seen this? It's a Native American Indian contraption, consists of wooden hoops and feathers, supposed to help you uh, sleep soundly. Getting cheap applause from an audience that already agrees with his politics. Herman Cain. There you go. 9 11. <laughs> and finding ways to show off his world-renowned impressions of other races, which honestly he still can't really do. So you get these Middle Eastern wannabe thugs. <laughs> you're nice people, but you can't pull off the thug look. Like, oh, 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 you know what? I am going to mess you up. Middle Eastern wannabe. And then does a very and then, bad Egypt accent. What the fuck? Dude. No, his, okay, one thing that I've consistently talked about with his... <laughs> With his accents, is like he only has one black guy voice. Yep. And it's Chris Tucker. <laughs> and it's always Chris Tucker. Like he doesn't do anything else. The thing and is, this kind of racism is the best kind. Because if you're bad at accents, then it's even showing like even the biggest like losers from the white races like dunking on you. You know, like I feel like they find it more entertaining. Yeah, like us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I won't show you any more because I am against cruel and unusual punishment, That's but for so what it's bad. worth, part two really of his act only got about 20% of the views that his first part got. So if that doesn't tell you everything you need to know about his theater skills, maybe we should take a look at his IMDb page where you oh, can read his actor. breakout role Please, on no. him. He was in Arthur. What? What's that? Yeah. Well, like yeah. Arthur the cartoon. Yeah. He was a voice actor in Arthur the cartoon. Get ready for this? Get ready. Arthur. He always gave me like a drama. Like got anything yeah. Wrong. Yes, it's hard to believe my first. Yeah, what would you think of me oh, this I Arthur. Oh, the loser. Wrong. Yes, it's the hard to man. believe my first exposure to this man was when he voiced the brain on a show my sister and I grew up watching. And to make it even more surreal, one of the episodes is literally about brain trying to become a comedian and failing. <laughs> changed i need to be practical and train myself for a new career in comedy you're going to be a god comedian? i know too much about this uh, stephen crowder's background this is an amazing we've watched amazing all of this research video crazy we've, we've watched no, all of these uh, uh, videos on and stream face facts. no he's crying over spilt milk Stop him! You gotta do something fast. It's the same as Crowder's jokes now. Himself. Ironically, Stephen was predicting the rest of his career with this one, as he struggled to find work outside of Arthur, with the exception of a few minor roles in the late 2000s, including the jock character in a pure flicks movie, and an appearance in the feature film directed by his brother Jordan, where he pretty much just plays himself. It's a double standard, just like the women's rights thing is a double standard. like. Now they have, oh, but now we're not allowed to hit them. Stephen's immediate career wasn't exactly popping off in the way he may have hoped. But that's not to say there wasn't an audience for his... He should have just done gay porn like Michael Knowles. Yes. Have Hell you yeah. seen that? No. But I was just saying yes to you should have done gay, gay porn. porn yeah. Oh, okay. You guys are just riding for gay yeah, porn. Yeah. Like, more people, more like more doing. gay yeah. porn. Um, yeah, uh, Michael Knowles famously, uh, you know, also is a uh, loser, failed actor. Um, and he, like a gay guy in the, in like a college movie, like a student movie that they made is really bad. We Style of well. entertainment. See, despite growing up in Canada, Stephen was always interested in American politics. And it was only a matter of time before Stephen launched his own YouTube channel, weighing in on whatever political matters were relevant at the time. You really can't find anything funny about this administration when Joe freaking Biden is vice president? He's doing smosh. What? What? It's like having Rain Man as vice president. Yeah, definitely, de definitely make a better VP than Joe Biden. 
Hillary Clinton and Rain Man make better VP than Joe Biden. <laughs> This stuff was so quality. Steven eventually caught the attention of Big Hollywood. So uh, no, not funny. Hollywood. Big Hollywood was an affiliate of Breitbart News, the fringe right-wing news website accredited for giving your grandparents a computer virus. Turns out Breitbart and PJTV... I used to work with a guy, uh, PJ, that literally went to Guantanamo Bay with Steven Crowder. They went to Guantanamo Bay to talk about how sick it is, That's not like how, how cool and, and wonderful the conditions are there, I think. He'd never even heard of that one. We're pretty big fans of what Steven was doing over on YouTube in 2008. And don't worry, I took the liberty of diving into the dark vat of Steven's old content, so you don't have to. <laughs> on Elm Street, the nightmare continues. Now, whether Steven wants to admit it or not, conservative comedy isn't the most competitive industry. Given how most mainstream comics, entertainers, and even musicians are typically left-leaning, meaning Steven never had to try as hard to get noticed, given the path that he chose for himself was always so narrow. Before long, he was being recruited to do stand-up at various Republican conferences, making his long-awaited rap debut at CPAC 2012 with the single Mr. America. I think I'll just let you be the judge of this one. Oh my god, she's shaking her booty, dude. Yo, this is all a quest to get Barbussy. The, <laughs> the best the best Barbara pussy you've ever seen, dude. She was throwing it back like Hank is not watching. God That's probably his mom. Damn, dude. That's his mom. I, I, I mean, are you trying to say that his mom is really hot? Well, then we're in a, I guess we're in a group. Yeah, but right now you're hot. Hey, ain't you big hitter? But now I'm back from the dead. I'm bringing back all my knickers. What, what knickers? No, it's okay. It's okay. I can say knickers because I wear knickers. Great job, Steven. Your tireless effort to engage the youth in America is encouraging. Aww. I want to hear this on the radio better than anything else on the radio right now. I guess it's time to give rap music a second look. <laughs> I can't That's do awesome. this shit, man. In 2009, Steven Crowder landed a job as the youngest media correspondent at Fox News. At that point, he had climbed the ladder from YouTube to obscure propaganda sites, and finally, to the biggest cable news network in the country, cutting his teeth on extremely pretentious op-eds that have aged absolutely tragically in light of recent revelations. In one bizarre- I'm a guy and I'll never badmouth my wife. That's right. He was a wife guy, dude. <laughs> Which is so funny because you know we know guy. we know how we we know how he is. Arlie judgmental article titled Waiting Till the Wedding Night, Getting Married the Right Way. Stephen writes, as anyone who's read my abstinence column here at Fox News Opinion could guess, sorry, just what an incredible sequence of words that is. My wife and I not only waited sexually in every way, we courted each other in a way that was consistent with our publicly professed values. We did it the right way. Now, of course, Stephen is referring to a personal choice that he and his wife made together. Saving sex for marriage is a completely fine and acceptable thing to do, just as it's also fine and acceptable to have sex before marriage. My hot take is that there isn't a right or wrong way to do it, just as long as you and your partner are on the same page. Everyone is different and that's fine. But Stephen disagrees, going on to write that he doesn't care if you feel judged, since he and his wife were apparently mocked all the time. People laughed, scoffed, and poked fun at the young- Yeah, he clearly- it just- he strikes me as a guy who definitely doesn't care. That's why he wrote a Fox News article about how little he cares about this celibate naive christian couple we'd certainly never make it to the wedding without stopping looking back i think the women saying those things have felt stopping. like the floozies they ultimately were and the men with their fickle manhood tied to their pathetic sexual conquest felt threatened side note that. but steven might possibly be the worst writer i've ever seen it's like guys who have sex are threatened mode? by virgins <laughs> sorry babe 
Let's be there in a Finishing up my Fox News abstinence <laughs> column before we can get to stupping. I don't want to focus too much on this one article, though, since we still have so much else to cover. But for Stephen to assume the role of an authoritative figure on the concept of marriage, morally grandstanding on anyone who may have had a different experience than him, only for it to be revealed that he's been abusing his wife behind the scenes for years, tells you everything you need to know about Stephen Crowder. I kind of just this assumed article is yeah, yeah. his wife. Not just because well, it's littered with... That's the thing that got me, like his public stuff that he says about women and feminism. I was like, I assume this guy's an abuser. And like literally a week before the news dropped, I looked up his wedding photos and they look so happy. I was like, oh, you know, maybe there's, maybe he's nice to one woman. Maybe I'm um, wrong. And then a week later, I was like, no, nah, I'm a fuck, well, I'm an idiot. Everyone looks happy at their wedding. Yeah. <laughs> no, it just made so much sense and I wasn't surprised. I was like, oh, it took this long for it to, be, for it to come out, for it to be revealed. But I think they're all doing it. And the only reason it came out now is because he was like in a in a little war with with other right wingers. Oh, was that why? Yeah, yeah. He wanted like more money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so stupid. Incomprehensible slang from what I can only assume is the 1920s, but because it perfectly encapsulates everything Stephen represents, a reality in which he conceals his ugly intentions behind a wall of judgment, hate, the and hypocrisy in an attempt to spread an ideology. And he's been people, doing it People forever. are commenting on the fact that we paused the video to talk. Yeah, we paused it a lot more. Than the sun does. I love this. Oh. When the union guys in December 2012, yeah. the conservative advocacy group Americans it's for so Prosperity, good. funded by two billionaire brothers, by the way, crashed a protest in Michigan regarding the state's recently passed anti union right to work law. With the help of Steven Crowder, the group of right wingers erected a giant tent in an effort to aggravate union members who were there protesting, causing a dispute that resulted in Steven getting punched in the face by a union worker. Sick, While the beautiful. full unedited footage showed the man being first and then pushed after this, the he ground and before getting getting back up and cameras. decking Stephen yeah. in the jaw. This crucial bit had been mysteriously left out of the version Stephen posted to his channel for some reason, making Bitch. it seem like the man Bitch had attacked made. him unprovoked. This was not only the narrative Stephen tried to spin Union on thuggery. Fox, but the edited clip. By the way, this was like most of conservative commentary back in the day before they like... Learned I mean, they would do... Yeah, they would do like a lot of the, the anti-gay stuff still, obviously, but like... They were openly anti-union. Not no. as much uh, anymore, if you notice. They're no. like, oh, yeah, we, we love the working class mm. now. It's like, no, you don't. You've always been fucking anti-union. Now they've decided to find, like, different methods of being anti-union, though. This is so funny. Alex mentioned it before. It's like he gets punched in the face and he decides, like, you know what? I'm going to go to uni campuses. I'm going to do my, my activism with smaller people. Yeah. yeah, no, he's, yeah, I'm going to do it with, with people who are not going to punch me in the fucking yeah, mouth. Yeah. So ended up being the one sent in to the Ingham County Prosecutor's Office in an attempt to press charges against the union worker. Nice. Dunning's question why Crowder didn't initially provide the original footage hey, to Sam. Dunning's office. I'm not holding that against him, but why would they provide the edited video? The longer video clearly shows the guy got pushed down and came up swinging. I think that's the polite way of the prosecutor saying they tried to provide us with false evidence. Though after yeah. reviewing the unedited version, prosecutors ultimately <laughs> ruled the man in fact acted in self-defense and dropped the case. So at the end of the day, this was all just Steven Crowder whining on national TV about an event that he and his own group instigated. So, so that that guy's guy's back, back, we had it, right? I saw that guy's back go down and then he came up off he his feet. Down. Yeah, there he is. What is that, yeah, Steve? He, he did go down. Oh, we were there you trying deserve, to prevent listen, people Steve, from being the tent. You deserve you what you liar, got. You are a sir. You, you are being swallowed. Your you union yeah, is being swallowed. They, these are babies flailing before being put to bed. They are violent. This was not an isolated event. Look around you, man. Yeah. Stephen was finally dropped by Fox News only a few months later for reasons that are still up in the air to this day. Some say it had to do with contract negotiations, while others insist it was because of comments he made about their biggest on-screen talent at the time, Sean Hanna. But most hilarious to me is when one senior employee at Fox told the Daily Beast that Stephen was never that funny anyway and crossed the line yeah. more than a few times. Yeah. Do you yeah, have any idea how much. obnoxious you need to be for even Fox News to turn against you? Tad insult One of the funniest people. One of the funniest like moments is Greg Gutfeld, who is like also deeply unfunny. He hates Stephen Crowder. Yeah. Stephen might be one of the the most unfunny Un people. Annoying. Just so yeah. annoying. Like, oh, I liked it when he went around in that um, morph suit. It made him look confident, at least. You know, he, he'd like crash places wearing like a morph suit. Hi, Kaya. 
Hello. 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 Hi, are you stuck? The injury leaks Twitter messages from Fox's very own Greg Gutfeld seem to allude to how oh. frankly unlikable Steven was on a private, personal level. Keep in mind, these messages are all alleged, as I can't personally verify them myself, but it is worth noting that Gutfeld has yet to deny or disprove their legitimacy. Plus, they kind of already fall in line with Steven's public persona, so just let me be messy here for a second. They're funny, okay? He has issues. I met him at a bar once and he sat Indian style on the like floor in the middle of a crowded bar. He was that. asking me what he thought of the you looks of his fiance. You know How fucked up is life? that? She is beautiful, but he couldn't judge. It was like he was shopping for a car and was asking his friend to uh... take it for a test drive. I nodded and wondered how I got into this mess. Adding it, me thinks he has an issue with his sexuality, which is fine, but it's so obvious to everyone but him. He was only at Fox News for like six months. We all hated him. He acts like he was a <laughs> badass who left Fox. No, none of us could stand him. He wants to be a star. Oh my God, he hates he everyone going. who took that risk and he did it. He calls himself a comedian, but doesn't perform. That's how the Schumer thing started. I would not let him call himself a comedian on my show. And Amy knew that. I hated him for saying he performs. What Gutfeld is alluding to here is an old episode from his show where Steven and Amy Schumer were both guests. And as you can probably imagine, having these two in a room together didn't go well. And you know, you slip by the, the dirty comedian thing, but honestly, you call yourself a comedian, but you don't do it that much. Like I go fishing a couple times a year, but I don't introduce myself on TV as a fisherman. Wow. Oh, from that moment, Stephen would make it a priority to rare. slam Amy yeah. Schumer from the comfort of his own studio any chance he got Aww. in a crusade that you cannot tell me wasn't a tiny bit personal. By the way, Amy Schumer, you're a fat slutty role model. Taking pride in being a fat bag of potatoes. She's the guy she accuses He's all the fat. guys of being. Mm -hmm. Only she's way the gross. I hate fat on fat violence. Grosser so, and fatter. So gross. Rah, rah, rah. I'm fat. Yeah. Snacks. Triggering the libs, though, would become the focal no point of his new show no. on YouTube, that's, The Louder oh, that's with Crowder, launched like. soon after his falling <laughs> out with Fox. Yeah. And this is where you really get some of the most potent feminist-owned videos that plagued all of YouTube in 2016. Hey, feminists. With his first viral video being hashtag SJW Feminist Festival crashed by Crowder I think I watched in this underwear. One. Prove once and for all that not all feminists are fat, unattractive, boy cutted androgynous amoebas. Oh my god. She's a lesbian! A lesbian! Epic editing there, Steven. Why he needed to go the extra mile and strip down to his underwear is beyond my reasoning, at least. I think him being removed has less to do with him being offended or whatever, and more to do with Steven intentionally irritating and causing a scene on purpose just to get a reaction for the internet. Excuse me, ma'am. Are you talking about body shaming? Let's talk about male body shaming. Should I be ashamed? Ah! It's not even about politics at a certain point. It's just about Steven being a public nuisance that nobody wants to be around. But after racking up a juicy 30 million views, Stephen Shit. and his producer Not Gay Jared, which is a totally normal thing to call your friend by the way, would make a habit of crashing these left-leaning events for the sole aim of exposing the liberal agenda, according to them. But if you ask me, it was mostly an excuse for Stephen to dress up as a woman, as he liked to do over and over and over and over and over. I'm not gonna keep going, Let's but it is that funny that for a guy who thinks trans people are grooming your kids, Stephen should can't get enough of wearing his wife's clothes and touching his producer in front of children. Like the time he and not gay Jared convinced a bunch of people at a feminist rally that they were trans women and were met with uh, kindness and support by the people there. We quickly found out yeah, that nobody that questions, own? criticizes, nor runs security They're background nice. checks on trans. Everyone back security background checks. Why would they? What? Random protesters at a fucking grassroots event are not going to run security clearance background <laughs> checks on other random protesters <laughs> because people do not immediately assume that every other human being is a horrific monster. <laughs> like what? Yeah, I, I always run background checks. When someone says they're trans, I'm like, whoa, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, 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 give me the documents. Where's your birth certificate? Come on. This he grabs back. Nice going, Steven. You really own those feminists by lying to How them and taking yeah, advantage right. of their hospitality for cheap clicks. You definitely look like the reasonable person in this picture. Okay, to be fair, that was probably the happiest day of his life. What? Finally being up? accepted? Yeah, when he, running around and claiming he was a trans woman and then everyone being like, oh, you go, sis. Like, you're killing it. Yeah.
It's hard to tell, these videos on Louder with Crowder really didn't contain much substance outside of Steven working backwards from an already established conclusion to prove some kind of flawed hypothesis. Sometimes not even he understands what it is he's truly arguing for. Take for example his position on trans athletes. Steven personally wants to see trans people competing in sports with the gender they were assigned to at birth. It's something he's long propagated across his platforms. But here he is complaining about just that. This is Mark Banks, a senior from Ulysses Trinity High School near Dallas, is in the process of transitioning from female to male and taking low dose of testosterone. Uh, just entered a high school wrestling tournament with an undefeated record and surprise, won. <laughs> that picture says a thousand words right there. Hey Steven, that is a trans man competing with cis women. He's being forced to compete with women because that's what people like you are arguing for. This is what you want. And this trans wrestler in particular, Mac Beggs, has openly expressed wanting to compete with cis men because it just makes more sense. I think he was... He also did, and he ripped cis men too. But he can't do that because the Republican-backed Texas law currently requires trans athletes to play in an athletic league which matches their biological sex determined at birth. Something that Stephen encourages and supports. My sure. position is biological males compete with biological males, biological females compete with yeah. biological females. Like Stephen, if you're watching, first of all, hi, what the f*** did you mean by this tweet? And secondly, just suspend your political bias for a minute and imagine if there there were hundreds of bills circulating around the country invalidating your right to live a normal life. Imagine if your basic access to healthcare, education, legal recognition, etc. was all up in the air for a small group of politicians to dictate. Something about that seems a wildly big government to me, a gross overstep of legislative power that a small government conservative like yourself should frown upon. But Stephen Crowder and the dozens of other vocal opponents of trans rights, freedom of expression is trumped by blind hatred for those that are just different from them. Despite freedom being one of the deciding factors that makes America the best country in the world, according to Stephen. But not only do I believe that our healthcare system is superior to those countries, uh, but there would be another reason outside that. of healthcare. Let's assume healthcare, that healthcare would be in those countries. He's like, we have the most MRI machines out of any country in the world. Yeah, <laughs> that's why we're the don't, best. You don't even understand. This man is also not very smart, as you know. Yep. So he can't even come up with his own talking points. So he's done videos where he basically, piece by piece, verbatim, copies the American Enterprise Institute and their talking points. And some of them are so incredibly unhinged. Also, he's Canadian, but that's besides the point. <laughs> yeah. Listen. Um, he... Uh, one of one of my favorite Steven Crowder American Enterprise talking points about healthcare is that Americans pay more for pharmaceuticals because we're subsidizing the rest of the world. Ah, oh, it's like a charity. But yeah, he's, he's saying we're subsidizing the west, rest of the world because he's implying that they like make the rest all the of pharmaceuticals the pharmaceuticals here. No. He's implying that we pay a high pr high price point so that the rest of the world can pay a low price uh, point. Yeah, right. Yep. It's but that's a that's a that's also a bad that's a good thing though, like that that's not a system that should be changed. Yeah, is he saying that's good or bad? No, he's saying that that's good that we're paying so much. Oh uh, yeah, because he wants because he loves all the other countries <laughs> in the yeah, world. Yeah, exactly. Um, freedom. But it's just he doesn't believe everyone deserves the same access to the fundamental freedoms he's been given. At least that's what it seems. Stephen doesn't seem to value those he personally deems inferior and would rather resort to ostracizing them in a public setting the same way he was ostracized oh, and bullied as a Beast child. Oh, but don't you feel a little Chris. bad for the bully? He's just a kid. I feel zero bad for him. And you know what happens when bullies aren't stepped down early in their childhood? Gaddafi. You'd hope someone like <laughs> Stephen, who has talked about being on the receiving end of Come relentless on. bullying throughout his life, would be one to stand up for those who have been unfairly attacked for committing the cardinal sin of trying to live no, a normal- you don't understand. He's pro Gaddafi. He's saying the people who uh, fucked them be. with a bayonet were bullied. Were bullied. <laughs> were bullied. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they weren't bullied enough, and that's why they became anti-Gaddafi assets.
normal life like the rest of us. But instead, Stephen takes the low road and chooses to relish in the power he now gets to wield as the bully himself. I think it's better that the bully learn his lesson now as opposed to later on in life when somebody snaps as an adult. It gets uglier. Stephen Crowder, a man who ironically brags about his strong Christian values, likes to spend his time berating people who strangely aren't white by threatening to call ICE on Mexican workers. I need papers. Do you have papers? He's gonna call ICE, you motherfuckers. Stephen enjoys what? showing off Whoa. his impression of Martin Luther King Jr. That's one of the most fucked up things I've ever seen. That's so funny. I love Wait, that. What, he like kidnaps people? And then he's like, I'm no, gonna he, he probably you. asked people if they wanted a lift or something, mm. and then was like, Show me your papers. I no, got you. No, no, he probably goes to like, uh, No, there are places where like undocumented workers will stand in a line mm. who hopes that someone will come, like a contractor will come and pick him up. Uh. Like a Home Depot, probably. That's fucked. Those people would have thought they're gonna get murdered. Mm. You would think this man's gonna shoot us. Copy that from the Amazing Racist. He's not even original. That was a 2007 thing. Yeah, he, even his racism is like fucking plagiarized. Things Claimed video Transler Bane versus Jihadi Bond, which are two different franchises. I mean, that one doesn't even make sense. Bye bye. Bye bye. Stephen loves to make the exact same joke about trans people every single year on Trans Day of Visibility, confusingly blamed trans rights activists for there being a higher rate of trans suicides. Is anyone surprised when it's a 42% attempted suicide rate? You don't have that anywhere else in the demographic. That would suggest some kind of mental proclivity toward extreme behavior, and I don't think it's helping people yeah. to simply enable it. I don't want nearly half of all transgenders to attempt suicide. I want that to be lower. Guess what doesn't work? It's wild that like, it is basically, right. hell yeah, You're so strong. You can hold up a whole puppy. Well, I mean, she's a, she's a big one. She's also hard to hold because she's just so, she's floppy. so floppy. I just don't want to drop her. I don't want to bring her in here. Hello, Kaya. Oh, who's in the bed? Who's in the bed? Stay. She has so much freedom this whole time. She's caged up. It's a great video. It's yeah, great. yeah. It's like really a good. lot of work. No, Jobbery's the shit. The He's editing's the man. great. The music's nice. He's great. It's the research is nuts. You have to watch so much. It's probably just because <laughs> he's, he's, he's a Steven Crowder fan. That's why. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Yeah. Just you like saying, you're all good, you're a woman. It doesn't help, it yeah. makes it worse. Had this to say about victims. Wouldn't it stand?
the beginning of Literally his. Literally all of them. <laughs> yeah. What? He said, as far as I know, and oh, he doesn't yeah. know much. I'm just an idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you know, in his defense, that's how that works. Have you looked up the times? Oh no. Because I'm trying to fucking, uh, I'm down to watch this guy. Yeah, that's sick. sick. I'm Dude, very I want to learn about the dark side of child trafficking. And it I, seems like you're not into well, it. I'm actually really excited. All right, don't like, show, don't show the camera. Everywhere, ever in America, the aircon's too strong. This is like the one movie I can actually watch. <laughs> no, no, I hope that the fucking air. Oh, I hope the air conditioning is not fucked up. Because then it would be. It'd be a sad state of affairs. Like, we would know that they're definitely trying to sabotage the movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? His career did a really fun and tasteful bit he liked to call Cultural Appropriation Week, where for about five days straight, he and not gay Jared began their show dressed in whatever caricature of a costume they had lying around that day. This week, the mystical age Wait, did you guys bring the uh, crate China. upstairs? Oh, thank you. Oh, See you later. Oh, like yeah, nice meeting you. It's kind of like the other woman. See you later. Put him back on. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Um, but there's no, no joke just, here either. It's just I'm going to dress up. Jo- I think the joke is that he wants to, wants to have sex with not gay Jared, who's not gay. Uh, he's trying very hard. Dan Stevens fans may be quick to write these things off as nothing more than edgy jokes, and that his critics are just being snowflakes for getting mad at such top tier comedy. But it's hard to make the argument that these are just mere jokes when they still accurately reflect the real belief Stephen appears to hold. For example, Stephen has stated that he's a traditionalist who doesn't believe in the concept of gay marriage. Uh, Myself personally, I, I am pro. Get down. Get down. Okay. Oh my God, she's, she's definitely too big. She also is too used to uh, not being in the crate. Kaya, Kaya, down. down, 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 get down, get down. No, she's too big. Don't even think about it. It's so funny when she jumps up. I can't. No laughing. No, we can't laugh. We can't laugh at her being bad. Fuck. It is pretty funny though when she like is so large she can like touch you. Well, she's scratching yeah, my yeah, back, it's just painful. going. <laughs> Yeah, it's very hard to ignore her. I, I know. Okay, she's yawning. Maybe she'll go to sleep. Traditional marriage. I agree with the president on this. You can't then turn around and make such unfunny jokes at the expense of gay people and expect viewers to suck it up and buy your socialism is for figs shirt. Gayness is still funny. It's absurd, so it's funny. It would be the same thing but also, if it's a like... duck walked in right now wearing pajamas. We'd be like, oh my god, there's a duck in pajamas. What are you doing at CPAT, duck in pajamas? We should kill it. But yeah. That's what's funny. But also, has he never watched gay comedy before? Like, gay people think gayness is funny. Like, they make jokes. Yeah, there's plenty. Yeah, had enough. Nice shirt, dude. Nice. Yeah, I can tell. What do you think I saw? Yeah. Uh, have a safe trip. Thank you. Well, hi. Journey. Thanks for, thanks for everything, Marat. I'm not, doing great. I'm not doing great. I'm not doing great. I'm not doing great, but it's okay. Why do all these... To- what? Oh, you did? Is it close? Are you the cutest little baby in the history of the world? No, he said it's not close. No, that's... You know, oh, well. But you're a close second. Do you laugh every time you see Austin? Yeah, always. I'm like, haha, he's gay. <laughs> And that's funny. <laughs> what is he doing here? Yeah, just like just like if a duck in pajamas walked <laughs> yeah, in. That's the same thing. To my studio. The last time I saw him, he was wearing pajamas. Oh. In your bed. Oh. Nice. Uh, it's on the oh, hook. 100%. Pajamas? Imagine that. It's the same thing when there's a dude like, hello, you look delicious. There's just no way to genuinely no write this stuff off as innocent no jokes. No one said that. When it's rooted in something that you genuinely... Uh, ha- have they not? I don't know. I you don't know he's... Think. Maybe he's cruising. You don't know. If anything, so. people might have definitely said that to him. It's too believable, I think. 
genuinely believe. By 2019, Stephen had really taken off in popularity, thanks to a little series he likes to call Change My Mind, which is ironically something Stephen never actually does. Even if you've never watched an episode of this yeah. thing, you've probably seen the memes. The premise is that Stephen travels around to various locations, mostly college campuses, and sets up a booth to debate random people on whatever issue he's feeling that day. Maybe it's fascism, gender, immigration, Black Lives Matter is a terrorist organization, you know, non-incendiary <laughs> topics like that. That's those. awesome. For the most part, he uses pretty eye-catching and intentionally offensive Quanta language to trigger a more passionate <laughs> response from the people there. Why? Well, it's exciting to watch people scream at each other, I guess. Plus, it's always helpful to make the opposing side look as unreasonable and shrill as possible. Stephen is banking on the fact that most of these kids are liberal, so having a substantive conversation with someone who disagrees with him shouldn't be a hard thing to do. But the problem with these debates is that the scales are already tipped so much in Stephen's favor that it's really not much of an evenly just watch matched him cut people exchange off when of ideas. Him, like... You start taking hormone therapy, it changes the way your muscles grow and you're not actually given that much of an advantage or you're not they don't have as much of an advantage as you think they might you know? are you sure about that well i guess i'm not sure but i also am not sure about anything so I'm not, you know this is his show after all so of course steven picks the topic the setting yeah. the circumstances who gets the microphone and when what makes the final he got fucking obliterated by some like nasball freak one time in the socialism yeah. Yeah, is yeah, I, I think i watched that one and yeah got rid of him immediately. No, no, he, he was like, he was like oh, you're being some... mean. Yeah, or yeah. you're like... Yeah, unfortunately, he was a, a, you know, Nazi loser, but... Final edit and what doesn't? Plus, he's already given himself ample time beforehand to prepare his talking points as much as he needs. Whereas he the sells kids he's debating merch. left their dorms yeah. that morning not expecting to debate their beliefs on things like abortion. No. They haven't Don't made a career off politics like Stephen has, making them easy targets for him to rain down upon with facts and logic, even when those facts aren't actually facts. For example, take his video, America is not racist, change my mind. Stephen at one point claimed that the U.S. has a higher class mobility compared to the rest of the world. First off, we have more class mobility here in the United States than Canada. Certainly than Canada. Can you define class mobility for me? Meaning there are more people in the United States who end up in the top 30% of income than anywhere else in the world at some point in their life or in the top 10%. Including people go from the top 10, from the bottom 10 or the bottom 30, the top 30, the top. There's more class mobility here in the United States, more ability to rise out of poverty into upper middle class than anywhere else in the world. It's not even close. Only yeah. I don't know That's what Stephen is. I don't even know why he lied about this because it's like such an easily debunkable talking point. Well, they can't point. debunk you there in person. That's what's That's important. It. Yeah, you have to know the talking points to be able to like address them adequately. And that is the whole point. Also, he's at a university. The professors are right there. Like there are people there that could answer this. Yeah. Also, you see, he There's has a booklet as yeah. well. Of, of I thought he yeah. sold it as merch. Uh, one, one of the chamber of mine is like, you can buy this. And own all your like your nephews facts. at um at Christmas dinner. Yeah, if you want to be the most unfuckable, the biggest loser. Kaya, off. Get down. Yeah. Get yeah. down. Uh, damn. I can't even use my left arm because it hurts. Oh my god, her paws are <laughs> so on, big. Kaya, down. No. Oh god, this, this is gonna be friends. Do you want to give it's gonna it a be puzzle? so hard. This is gonna be so fucking hard to to retrain her. The puzzle you need to put like treats oh, in every right. in every pocket. You can. Oh god. Okay. Let's sure, he links to an image of a random study on screen, but even this doesn't show the U.S. compared to the rest of the world. According to the World Economic Forum, America ranks 27th beneath all these other countries. Not what I would call a high, personally. In another one on abortion, Stephen finds himself perpetuating the notion that the majority of late-term abortions are not a result of medical complications, but rather because the woman just feels like doing it. You know, women who do have late-term abortions they're not out here walking around at eight months pregnant saying, oh, you know what? I don't feel like having this baby anymore. Let's just get rid of it. Sure they are. No, they're not. That's almost all late-term abortions. Mm. Yeah, almost all late-term abortions are women who are just like, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. YOLO. I yeah. fucking hate these guys. I love, I love carrying it for eight months only to fucking uh, yep. abort it. No, the way in which he says it, it's such He's an like, yeah, they are. Like, okay, yeah. Sure. Oh, I like that he didn't do that. 
<laughs> he's like, I, I took your car out of the garage because I was using the garage. Mm. There's Late a majority there, there, that are medically induced and necessary. No, not a majority. Well, whatever ones that are fact, not, nearly those never. Are not. But I'm not sure where Steven got this either. Considering just how exceedingly rare abortions in the third trimester even are, making up for only 1% of all abortions across the US. This means the data on why women would need to get an abortion later into the pregnancy is extremely limited. So the term it's usually a term medical date abortion it's something is not a medical wrong. term and it Yes, that's why it happens. Yeah. It also yeah, well, late term abortion. Late term abortion is like a made up concept anyway. Yeah, like they they call it late term abortion because you know as she's describing right now, it sounds scarier. Yeah, it often really complicates this discussion because people kind of take it to mean something like a third trimester abortion or abortion just before or during birth, which are not. I mean, it's kind of funny to because like Republicans lie and say that like. Democrats kill babies in a guillotine style contraption as it's like escaping the pussy. You know what I mean? <laughs> like a little thing that they, put they, on the yeah, end. they yeah. took it. They took it to the maximum level already where they're like, Democrats want you to kill your Democrats want you to kill your child. This is coming out the womb. You know they what put I mean? A paper shredder on the end of the bed when the baby comes. Yeah. Out. It's so really stupid. Really things that happen. And I think that it kind of, really distracts from the conversation when people use that terminology. For reference, only about one and a half percent of U.S. abortions happen after 20 weeks. And this is usually what people are referencing when they say, quote, late term. The percent yeah, of you, you take a little bit of a cheese and you put it in a mousetrap and the babies love cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they start Ooh. so they start crawling out of the womb. OK. They start crawling, crawling, crawling out of the womb. And then as soon as they touch the cheese, uh, head first, boom, Abortion. neck broken. And, and you know, it's squishy to begin with. And sometimes so, women just feel like doing that. Yeah. They just feel like <laughs> yeah. it. So yeah. yeah. You've never experienced thrills until you've carried a child for nine months. Yeah. Like, had it grow inside of you, okay, fully form into a baby, only to fucking, uh, you know, take it out of your body and immediately execute it. Sometimes you feel like it. Yeah. Of those that are due to life threat or lethal fetal anomalies is really hard to track because they aren't always reported and when they are reported they aren't always reported for the reason but a vast majority of them will be because of a lethal fetal anomaly or a serious complication and risk yeah, to the it. person who's pregnant i would venture to say that all abortions that happen between 20 and 24 weeks fall into three categories most will fall into those two groups of a life risk or lethal fetal anomaly. And the remainder are people who wanted to have an abortion earlier, but didn't have access. So the irony here is that people who talk about this, Crowder absolutely included, are almost always against easier access in the first trimester, which yeah. directly increases how many people seek termination later on in pregnancy. I have had more patients than I can count who have experienced not only the trauma of having to end a pregnancy that they wanted, but then having to go on and be repeatedly traumatized mentally by family and friends having these conversations in such black and white, non-compassionate manners. We cannot forget the fact that this number is probably going to go up because we have taken away access that was previously difficult and now is impossible for probably 50% of people in the U.S. So the only outcome of that is going to be that more abortions happen later in pregnancy because people no, have I to spend thing, time video, and money. You no, know, I did a thing, video idea, baby guillotine. It's actually something I really wanted to make. There was a thing that- What? We, a baby guillotine? Well, it's not quite a baby guillotine, but there was an idea that was patented, patented, which was a central fugue, centrifugal- Centrifuge? Centrifugal baby- uh, like thing to help women give birth by spinning them around, spinning the baby out. No, spinning the whole ba the woman so fast, like a like the a laundry baby, machine. Yeah, but the baby flies out of them. That's awesome. How cool is that? We got one of those at the theme park in Sydney. Yeah, the, the rotor. rotor. <laughs> so that's what? what I wanted to make, but that's not that's a not machine so using abortion. centrifuge to push a baby out. Yeah, how cool is that? It separates. A liquid. doctor did that once in England. Literally popped the head off during birth. <sighs> Dude, you wanted to do that? Yeah, well, I wasn't going to do it on a real baby. Just my sister's baby. No. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not a real baby. It's fake. <laughs> well, it's yours, technically. Yeah. Like, you you, you own your... a piece of it. You know what I mean? 
But it's family. It is family. You I thought you meant he had that. sex with his sister. Yeah, I thought I you were like, making no, his allegations. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I meant like, no, I meant like if that it's was your- That was a private conversation. So. No, <laughs> I meant like if it's a family member, you, yeah. you, can, you can, you know, do the guillotine thing. I'm not doing a guillotine. Come on, thing. okay, the rat it's trap. The rat the trap. Do the rat trap. The rat trap. <laughs> Figuring out how to get access when they can't get access where they live or in the state that they're in. The issues that Stephen tries to condense into just a few short words are far, far more nuanced than he'd have you believe. And he does this kind of thing constantly. Like here, when he insists America's healthcare system is the best in the world, simply because hospitals in Canada and Europe have a higher mortality rate, which apparently means oh, yeah. they have worse care. Don't just look at the one portion of the equation. How much are you? Yeah, because Americans die on America, the street. You, yeah. yeah, you can't go to the hospital. It's too expensive to die there. <laughs> what do you mean? You die in an Uber on the way to the hospital. No, like literally. No, but that is a part of it is because it we don't have like great fucking uh, elderly care in hospitals. So you can't go to the hospital anyway. You just fucking. You're going to die anyway. So you might as well fucking die at home. Plus, not that many people die in hospitals regardless. It's not like yeah. it's not where you die. The overwhelming majority of people die at like, you know. Uh, elderly homes or fucking their house. Yeah, we should look up uh, mortality rate in North Korean hospitals. <laughs> Probably better. Yeah. He's spending. What are you getting for that? What is the rest of yeah. the world getting from privately funded healthcare? The reason why less Americans are dying in a hospital, if true, wouldn't have to do with hospitals in America being better quality. It actually just means more Americans are dying at home because they can't afford to die in a hospital which you might recognize as literally the opposite of his point. Oh, they found the childbirth by centrifugal yeah. force. How did you find this, Alex? What were you looking for? I think I was talking- Fucked up things to do to a baby. <laughs> I think I was talking with William Osman about like horrible patented ideas. Oh, that that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this Wait, is how the- a pregnant woman? Is that the woman or is that the baby? No, that's the woman. If that's the baby was already out, you wouldn't have to do this procedure. But also, uh -huh. how do you know where the baby's going to fly out? It could fly... Well, yeah. it is a net. Ah. Dude, they accounted for that. That's They're brilliant scientists. I thought scientists. you have like thought, 20 doctors. They, why did you... Why would you think that the brilliant scientists did not account for the baby flying out? Yeah, yeah. No, they got everything there. Oh, my God. Yeah. Did she slay? Oh, God. What is this? Is it Trisha Paytas link? What? Why? Why? M. Hud, why are you showing me this? What is it? It's Trisha Paytas uh, portraying herself as The weekend. Right, but Stephen will stop at nothing to make sure he comes oh, out God. looking or smarter nor. than the other person in the heat of debate, even if he needs to pivot oh, to another talking point. If you watch enough of these, you'll sometimes hear Stephen say things to the effect of, hold that thought, or let's put a pin in that, when his opponent says something that actually makes sense. Only Stephen never comes back around to those points. What's your position on the minimum wage? Well, hold on a second. Uh, is this your, this is your changing my mind. I want to make sure. Yes, I want to get started. Okay, my position on the minimum wage. Yeah, I, I, you know what? Uh, I'm not a fan. Are you against illegal immigration and legal immigration from poor third world countries? Of course I'm against illegal immigration. Well, I'm trying to convince you that your own objectives, if you're a conservative, cannot be achieved under capitalism. Okay. And so I'll sure. give you an example of that. Yeah. Um, you have a lot of Republicans like Paul Ryan. You cannot deny that he is a big capitalist and he has lots of capitalist donors that would like nothing more than to increase their profits. I think you can agree with that. And people like that have been opposing immigration reform for this decades. This is the Nazi kid, by the way. Because they believe yeah. that mass immigration will this. lower the wages yeah. of the working class and yeah. increase their profits. Okay, so I would agree with you on that. So if you impose a minimum wage, mm -hmm. you're not going to have this mass immigration coming in because the companies that are taking these illegal immigrants and taking these low-wage immigrants, if they had to pay them $15 an hour, we wouldn't have mass immigration like we're having right now. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily know that I agree with that premise. So let you me kind of go... Um, cause First off, before I, I would like to take that, hold it. What example we point to before we go on? Because I, I know a lot of times we disagree of a successful socialist country. Uh, huh? They just get forgotten as the conversation trails elsewhere. Stephen also loves to move the goalposts when he senses his opponent making an argument he isn't able to disprove. The idea that there have been different genders outside of man woman for centuries. Okay, how so? Yeah. Uh, India. India. Yeah. In India, sure. you know, they have their gender. Native American cultures, they have 
their genders. Sure. In ancient Egypt, they had their genders. Okay. So you do realize, um, and you talked about how very different it was from Western culture. So antithetical to Western culture, you named India, ancient Egypt. You know what else? Uh, we also uh, believe in that's antithetical to those cultures. We're against slavery. Good. He tried to claim the idea of two genders was a new one when the yeah. individual in glasses corrected him with historical examples that proved him wrong, he immediately pivots. Stephen is but relying on the people he's debating so in America. Yeah, hold on. So it's easier to twist the conversation wherever and however he wants. And if things get too hot, he can always just pass. Get fucking owned, libtards. I'm, I, I, she's changing my mind, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's working. Yeah, third gender is akin to slavery. Well, now I'm pro-trans and pro-slavery because he, 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 he realized, I realized yeah. there was a saying. Yeah, yeah. there's a correlation yeah. between the two. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> Ask the mic to someone more naive. Define, because it's a very specific definition. You came in and just said shill. Yeah. And I'm really quickly to give him, get ready to give the microphone. Look how much closer he's getting to him. Because this isn't the goal. Of yeah, it. yeah. He senses well, he's, he's losing, so he's like, I'm a debate. crushy but, child. Oh. That's fair, what? that's fair. Yusuf. Yusuf, I appreciate Yusuf taking the time. Everyone give a hand to Yusuf. So, appreciate it very much. We'll grab someone else here. Thank you, Yusuf. Or, you know, just you. Wild that Yusuf is a, is a Nazball. Using a woman's own abortion against her. Baby, let me tell you something. What you ended was a unique genetic code oh. that had eye color, hair color, how tall it would be, how much it would I weigh, its personality. Him proclivity toward mental illness this is something you said what kind of losing. hair pattern to male yeah, pattern yeah, yeah, bones. when you when you had that abortion performed you eliminated all of that that's a scientific fact the fact is is that it was a choice and it was something that had to be done like even if you're pro-life what kind of excuse is it to weaponize yeah. something so personal against someone for the sake of looking cool in an amateur he doesn't care a college he student doesn't. just a cruel example of his strategy yeah. to come out looking intellectually and morally superior no matter the cost on the surface this show may present Stephen as having a willingness to change okay people in the chat said um sperm holds genetic information as well does Steven Crowder not jerk off? And I'm not, I, I don't know. I feel like the show is jerking off. I feel like he's the type of dude who might not actually jerk off. He's the type of dude who whips himself with a fucking belt at the end of <laughs> every night. Yeah. Maybe this is why he's so angry. And uh, yeah, he's, everyone. oh, dude, he's doing no fap. He's doing no fap. <laughs> doing fucking no fap, dude. He's a retentionist change his mind if someone can convince him to do so. But that's not the same sentiment he expressed in this clip at the beginning of the series. He's so it's important. This isn't about just a debate or a highlight reel. Huh? The someone point to this exercise is to actually <laughs> get people to question their own point of view and see if their argument is rational. And uh, maybe at the end of it, they'll end up changing their own mind. See, in case it wasn't painfully yeah, obvious totally. enough, Stephen never intends to change his mind. I, I know. I, 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 this is why I fucking hate debate perverts like i engage in debates from time to time but i recognize it for what it is okay it's just fucking pseudo intellectual uh, wrestling yeah it's, it's not for so anyone. it's so stupid to be like oh this is actually the socratic method that we're we're parsing through uh treacherous uh intellectual boundaries and and arriving at the truth it's like no man it, it's not it's just you're you're just repeating talking points that you readily uh, built ahead of time and whoever's uh rhetoric is is better whoever has like strong skills whoever is a better orator seemingly wins that conversation conversation is not about the truth ever it's just about uh ritualistically humiliating your interlocutors i had a debate lord in chat today arguing with me for using debate lord as a slur and i checked his logs here you banned him over three years ago that's awesome they are also the most, like, the bait lords are also the most, like, passionate. Like, they can't let anything go. They'll they'll hold on to grudges for years and years and years, dude. But they it, think that they're a fucking anime villain. But it's such oh, a, I like, self-destructive superpower, though. Because, like, everyone who's any good at debating is, like, the worst person to be around. Like, you just you just can't have friends. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a deal with the devil. After so many episodes of this show, the only thing that Steven's ever reconsidered is his opinion on Teslas. Uh, now he likes them, I guess, because they personally benefit him and his wife. Uh, I have changed my mind on a subject. Really? Uh, really? Tesla.
list. Let's go. Great. The Change My Mind series, though, has never been anything more than cheap. Yeah, it's the one car that uh, he and his wife have. He probably likes it because he can, like, track it in real time. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike the Ford Focus that they had beforehand, who, doesn't ha who didn't have, like, internal navigation <laughs> that he could track entertainment masquerading as some open and intellectual exchange of ideas in which Stephen's beliefs somehow always end up looking the best. Huh. Stephen knows his audience doesn't want to see evenly matched debates. That's boring. They want someone dunking on a woke college freshman on their way yeah. to their next gender studies class or whatever. They want their preconceived view of the world validated. And Stephen is more than happy to provide them a safe space. I mean, if you were really looking to have a productive and nuanced conversation wouldn't he debate real experts as opposed to naive undergrad students? There's a reason he's continuously backed out of debates with people you'd think are on Stephen's same level of political prowess. Take a Peter well, Hatch- I mean, they're not. Because Sam Cedar would fucking eviscerate him. In the, in the short conversation that he had with Sam Cedar, oh my god, what a fucking nightmare. Sam Cedar owned him so much that he ha ended up divorcing his wife. Think about that. <laughs> <laughs> like hitting a top of the hour ad break so hard that you end up dramatically changing your life like as the tiktok zoomers are calling a canon event that's the new thing now everyone's talking canon. about canon events canon oh, events i didn't know that yeah i've seen it Did you learn that in france no i learned it on twitter i'm yeah. on twitter all the time at the top of the hour there's another canon event <laughs> a three minute ad break if you no longer want to see those ads all you need to do is subscribe you can do that for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. It's from Spider-Man, little bro. See, see now, that doesn't work. You can't say little bro and be like, it's from Spider-Man, <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's it's like, you're supposed to say, it's from Spider-Man, old man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My it's elder. Peppa Pig, uh, little guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, you can't, it's not the own you think it is, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> my man, you're the little bro here, okay? <laughs> anyway, here's the three-minute ad break now. Jesus Christ field for example a youtuber who frequently debunks pseudoscience and climate change denialism on his channel after baselessly trying to refute hadfield in 2017 stephen crowder challenged him to a debate to which hadfield accepted but was <laughs> surprised to see stephen fail to show up to their previously scheduled live stream <laughs> well i'm sure there's a good reason for that maybe that was during one of stephen's many hospital visits i mean who's to say he'd only do this again with cody johnston a left-leaning youtuber who challenged stephen's position on gun control control in 2017. I pointed to an actual investigation done by the state of New York with actual <laughs> hidden camera footage of someone actually trying to buy and successfully buying a gun at a gun show. That's all I pointed out. Oh, and his response yeah. to this was to tweet That's in all caps, challenge accepted, and then say we would debate. Not would you debate me, <laughs> but treating my little segment as a direct challenge and request to debate him. I would show this tweet of his, but he deleted all of the tweets associated with it. Here's my response, if that helps. I still am not sure what he wanted to debate. But perhaps the most famous instance of Stephen debate dodging is with Sam Cedar, another political commentator and voice of Hugo on Bob's Burgers, who Stephen has guy. tried to avoid at all costs, starting when he inexplicably dropped out of a debate with Sam at the 2018 Politicon, then hilariously tried to lie about it, which may not have been the best move, Considering there's an entire phone call out there with an event organizer confirming Stephen got quote cold feet and had to bail at last minute. You've Here never gone to is one. the phone call. I did want to talk to you about the debate. Okay. So um, it seems that Stephen Crowder has maybe gotten some cold feet. Okay. And feeling a little intimidated, so I don't think he's coming. He's not even gonna come. Right. Why is that? You know, it's a great question. I would love to ask it to him myself. Um, he's not even answering anymore. I, I don't know what his team is doing around him. And that's, you know, just for me to speculate at this point. Um, he, I don't know. He has a team. He has like a whole team doing. and he won't do it. He can bring the team. <laughs> I believe it's his father, but I can't yeah. confirm or deny right. that. Okay.
teams. Dad, dad won't let me fly. Um, <laughs> so now that we're all up to speed, let's fast forward to summer 2021, where Stephen gets into an argument with Ethan Klein, challenging oh God. him to a debate. Ethan accepted, but days before it was all supposed to go down, Ethan tapped Sam Cedar and asked if he would want to pop into their call the following Monday. Sam agreed, but in order to be there on time, this was Sam ended his. Okay, I'll just decide this was a canon event. Like it literally did brick Steven Crowder. Yeah. I like his life this. his life fell apart after this. <laughs> his wife divorced him. He like threw uh, and it's like the domino effect, right? He probably his thought wife everyone was Sam Cedar after this. He yeah. his wife. wife. Was Sam yeah. yeah. His, his wife divorced him. Uh and then he like went into this weird fucking weird mental space where he like openly yelled about a 50 million dollar deal where everyone online was like what the fuck yeah. are you doing yeah. you don't understand that's not a lot of money like 50 million you're saying no to 50 million what's what the fuck is wrong with you and he hasn't like really been uploading that much no has he and i don't see much support for him anymore online anywhere the ring video was from four days after Sam and Ethan. Yeah. The ring video really? was like, it doesn't work for me either. That was from four days after Sam and Ethan. Yeah. Show that day 30 minutes earlier than usual. Everything was going according to plan until minutes before the H3 podcast went live. Ethan receives an email from Steven's booker. His dad. It's his dad. Let's be honest. That Steven's pregnant wife had to be rushed to the hospital and that they need to reschedule for the week after. Because the timing was so peculiar, Ethan immediately suspected Steven's team must be keeping an eye on Sam's show and canceled out of fear that he may ambush Steven during during the age three Part podcast, awesome. to which Sam was quick to dismiss at oh, first, Sam show only for Stephen to time. later admit to monitoring Sam's show after the fact. That's how terrified Stephen was of oh. facing this man in anything even resembling a debate. It doesn't You're end so there. I had no better. idea that you were taking your show off early last time, coming in today with your pig pen peanuts. Out. I'm very genuinely unsure Holden? what it is about yeah. Sam Cedar that strikes so Dude, much. It's like fear it's like the Stephen crowd. Bro, it's like the Jonah Hill thing, where like they think it's badass to like openly admit that you're scared of this like man this like man with children who voices a, a cartoon <laughs> you know what i mean like it's just like the jonah hill thing where it's like dude it's fucking badass to tell your girlfriend that she can't take photos <laughs> like and post them or be a surf instructor like you don't understand it you don't understand what alpha dog being an alpha dog <laughs> yeah, is like. It's what men do. Yeah, it's what it's how you become the biggest alpha dog. Outer, but by the time the H three debate finally rolled around, Stephen's worst nightmare finally came to fruition, and I do mean nightmare. Oh, oh, there he is. Oh no, Sam Cedar. What a what, what a what fucking a nightmare. nightmare. Oh, I had no. no idea this was going to happen. I thought I thought Ethan was a stand-up guy. This is oh, where we no. are. Yeah, I told Dave, Dave, remember I told you? I told you, I said, this is, I guarantee you, he's gonna do anything he can to avoid the debate. The day Steven was meant to go live with Ethan, Sam had pre-taped. You wanna know what's funny? Ethan now would cook Steven Crowder in a debate. Mm -hmm. Ethan was, at that time, he was not very confident in his own skills. But since then, he's like, it's like a fucking kung fu movie. He's been like <laughs> fighting lower level villains uh, in the field of like uh, internet debate. He started off with like some fucking random cult guy, the Nixium sex cult guy. Oh, he like I moved the on. Guy, I think. Yeah, he did the TikTok guy. He's been like leveling up every day. He eviscerated uh, pearly things. The 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 ginger woman who's always like women are stupid and if you're not a virgin you shouldn't get married <laughs> like that kind of shit he's just ollie london which was i think his hardest oh, yeah. his toughest battle he bodied every single one of them uh yeah <laughs> just pearly things was a side quest no experience gain yeah <laughs> no i think he powered up too much he already he already had too much xp at that point so like uh it was too low level the ollie london one like uh, you know made him power level a little bit Get the one be Andrew Tate guy. Yeah, we did all that. His show and aired it as if it were live to trick Steven's team into this thinking it was so safe, sick. assuming they were watching. Turns out they definitely uh, were and were entirely blindsided when Sam joined the call. And as uh, you can probably guess, things sick. got messy fast. <laughs> You take those off of the velvet really team buttons. We must have been Black very worried about this, Steven. Like I don't know why. No one's would be worried no about it, Sam. 
people to this day say that that was actually anti-Semitic, and I'm so confused by it that I just like I don't even understand. Which bit? Wait, which bit? When say? he says you have the velveteen rabbit eyes. I'm not. You got to be really deep in that law. I don't. Yeah, really I don't know. I, I actually don't know. Not saying that. It's like I, I don't even know what that is. Sam is hot. Is the thing. Yeah. He's like what? Yeah. Oh yeah. He is. Yeah. He's a dilf. I understand velveteen. He has beady. He has beady eyes. Uh, okay. But to be fair, like Stephen Crowder, I, I I can see him unearthing the ancient tomes of like racist literature. <laughs> yeah. yeah, to it's like a last resort to get out. To of find like the deepest of cuts. It's like a curse. Want to well, do let's, it? Let's have Sam, a debate. Come on, no Stephen. You are such a coward. Stop debate. showing your little leprechaun you co-host who comes right, out right. dressed hey, like Ethan, your Ethan, sidekick. Come on, Ethan, why are you talking about Stephen? You can't build an audience. audience. And so what why happens is he uploads so fifteen times more. Do you think has your less than a fifty? For the record, that's exactly what Stephen Crowder used to do against the Young Turks. That's all I'm gonna say. Just surprise him like that. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I upload fifteen fucking videos about TYT every time. So the audience. Well, that's why he wants to debate you, is so he can build his. Sam, do you Sam, think come on. Your where's... audience yeah, cares yeah. that I only have a million subscribers and you have what six or seven million I think, subscribers? Let me answer. Can I, I answer your question? Can do. I answer your question? Can I answer your question? Sure. You want me to answer your question? My audience would say Sam who? How did you know the... I ended my show what, early talk. last week, Stephen? If your audience because doesn't even know me, because you're an idiot, how did half you know of your that? staff doesn't Do you like my you. Show? Sam, fake stand-up comic who we can't find any footage about online. Let I'm me not finish. A stand-up comic. Oh, you're not. Okay, that makes sense because everything that I've seen is incredibly unfunny and unentertaining. Oh, no. Which explain the audience. Irony, irony alert, Stephen. Thank you. Power. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's wild. Yeah. I I forgot these parts. Like I I didn't realize. Do they actually debate? Or is it no? Nice? It's just him fucking flailing and just trying to be like, you know, your staff doesn't like you, which is ironic. Again, every single thing he said here about Sam Cedar was projection. His staff we now know fucking despised him. Half of those guys that were in this video are now not uh, a part of the Steven Crowder universe any longer. Not even not gay Jared. What was his Oh name? yeah. That was the first one that left. That left. Really? Uh, he left years ago. Yeah. And literally said that he would like try to put his penis on uh, like the shoulders of men in the studio on like the tour bus and stuff. Um, and also on top of that, uh, he used to do the thing like the fake the fake stand-up comedian thing is incredible yeah like, that's, that's you yeah. he's like what's like that it's really hurt me i was right all right yeah we you can, you can, you can run away. This you run away twice <laughs> cold feet again come on david Wow. <laughs> Becoming extremely irate, Steven went off on Ethan, switching his camera over to his co-host and left the call within minutes of Sam showing up. No debate happened because according to Steven, Ethan took the coward's way out. But then again, Ethan Klein has never claimed to be a master debater, which Steven was aware of, referring to Ethan as a layup in the days ahead of the debate. Not everyone is as experienced in the great halls of debate, I, I get it, I'm the same way, but Steven on the other hand, does this kind of thing for a living. You would expect a little bit more from someone like him. And despite how much he loves to insist that change my mind isn't a debate, Stephen prides himself on his ability to have open discussions on divisive issues that challenge our beliefs. With college students who aren't Sam Cedar. Being blindsided by Sam in this instance still doesn't explain why Stephen has gone to such lengths to avoid in conversation with him in the past. Is it because Sam is just an unfair, malicious debater who is Stephen even claims everyone tries to avoid? Well, I just don't think that really fits. So maybe it's just the simpler answer, that Steven Crowder is just not good in debates and knows it's harder to use not. disingenuous rhetorical tactics to manipulate the conversation when it's someone capable of calling him out. Steven has demonstrated that he is incapable of defending his ideas on a genuine debate stage, and I think it's something he's always been insecure about. Much like Ben Shapiro, he'd prefer to take pot shots at college students that he can easily package into a triggered sjw compilation at least ben does debate uh from time to time yeah, though yeah like steven crowder does not have the same uh skills of of rhetoric they gets ben millions of views on his fast. channel that's yeah, what reaches fast. a bigger audience and yeah. makes his arguments no they do the same shit it's just like it's all cherry pick data it's yeah. all completely ridiculous none of it is actually like you're you you are taking advantage of 
uh, people's good nature in that circumstance. Mm. And you're overpowering them by, in Ben's case, it's just like speaking fast and just like dropping, uh, gish galloping, dropping uh, cherry pick data points over and over again. And then also just like every very skilled debater that people see as like brilliant online, a big part of debating, a big part of debate culture is basically taking logical fallacies and trying to rationalize them. So... Like one example is like just taking like an incredibly exaggerated example. Like when someone says, oh, I, I think that there should be a minimum wage. Just going, why not, um, uh, you know, why not make the minimum wage $100 an hour? Like and normally in a, in a normal cir circumstance or even in like a actual uh, debate with uh, a moderator, that wouldn't stand because you would say, OK, well, you know, you can't just. That's not what the argument is. That's not what the argument right. the other person is presenting. You just took it and you you ran with it. You're making the other side of uh, forcibly assume or adopt that position. Whereas, yes, it's reductio ad absurdum. Thank you, Chatter, for <laughs> being the biggest fucking nerd in here. I <laughs> was trying to hide my nerd uh, power level. Okay? But... Although that is a logical fallacy that would not uh, would not be utilized in a in an argument where there's a moderator, debate lords take advantage of having no real moderator that understands logical fallacies, and will turn around and rationalize it and be like, "Well, why not? Like, I'm just trying to understand your logical boundaries." Mm. And it's like, "No, you're not. You're trying to belittle your interlocutor. That's all you're doing." You are trying to belittle their position by uh, advocating for an argument or claiming that they're advocating for an argument that they never made. So just remember that. That is like what the majority of the debate lords online do. And then their audiences will then follow along with that narrative and will make it seem like you assumed a position that you never actually uh, said. Kind of like what the chatters were doing earlier when we were talking about the Jonah Hill shit, right? putting words in your mouth, clipping something out of context, and then running along with it. And that's why they're unbearable fucking losers for the most part. That's it. See, this guy probably is a debate pervert. He said bad example. It, the irony is that bad example that he's talking about is one that Ben Shapiro has literally made. I know that that is one that Ben Shapiro has literally made. I've used it in the past, as a matter of fact. I've, I've pointed to it. So you're you're wrong. It is actually a very good example. Okay? It's a very good example because it's one that Ben Shapiro has quite literally made in debate. Okay? And everything that you do going forward will only out you as a uh, out you further as a debate pervert, a debate pedophile if you will. <laughs> uh, see, you're doing it. You're doing it right now. No, I'm not. I have other reasons for saying it. I will not elaborate. Look the best, after all. But at least Ben actually has real debates sometimes. Speaking of which, why don't we check in on how these two besties are doing now? Well, folks, I'm sure many of you have seen the controversy that has broken out between, I would say, our former friend, Stephen Crowder. I I'm personally insulted. Just because the whole segment ended up being you fighting people who didn't agree. Okay, shut the fuck up. By Steven's behavior here, it You're really doing is it. one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. Oh, well, that's sad to hear. Uh, Steven and Ben used to have such a close bond. Yeah, they were so cute together. Lawyer present? Do I need, do I need half Asian pills? Oh, just copping a peek! <laughs> These two have always had a long history of genuine friendship under their belt. One that predates online fame, mm. with Ben Shapiro being Steven's first like lawyer like who him. helped him negotiate his original deal with like Fox cheap News. Jokes That's how far way. back they go. They've helped each other out more than a few times professionally, which is why they effectively split the conservative community in half at the beginning of 2023 with their falling out. There's a lot of petty gossip to get into here, but trust me, we're gonna go over all of it. So sit back, relax with a steaming mug of black rifle coffee in one oh, hand yeah. and your baby matt walsh plushie in the other so and let's funny. get into it those are real things the baby matt walsh plushie on january 17th of this year stephen crowder published a 27 minute video ominously titled it's time, it's to, time stop, to stop to his main channel of almost six million subscribers to his with wife. no conventional intro yeah. no jokes and no cringe yeah, it was, that wasn't his decision no he said it's time to stop going out to get groceries yeah. when I need to go to the gym <laughs> because there's dudes out there. 
there's other dudes out there. What if they're hotter than me? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Fellas, if you let your wife go out to get groceries while she's eight months pregnant, uh, when you're supposed to go to the gym, she might be out there fucking dudes. Yep. Okay. Is this your child? You don't even know. No, it happens. Yeah. It happens. Yeah, 70% chance she's getting railed, okay? The music video, thank Christ. Stephen has almost a somber approach in making vague allusions to a conversation that he admits he's actively avoided. This has been a long time coming. This is a conversation that I've actively avoided, sidestepped, um, and I've hoped and prayed that it not be necessary behind the scenes for a long while, but that's no longer possible. This has to stop or I'm going to have to stop. This may just not be for me anymore. Yeah, that's pretty intense, huh? Steven has spent his entire adult life. It was so dramatic, and then when the reveal, oh God, that was such a fun week. Because the reveal was that he said no to $50 million. Yeah. Like, what an insane. He did, he did it for the grassroots conservative pundits, though. You know? yeah, no, he did it for the grassroots racism. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the main, the major point of contention was that they would cut his pay if he was so racist that he got banned off YouTube, <laughs> which is fucking hilarious. And in many respects, I also kind of understood where he was coming from. Because they were hiring him for the racism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not like they were hiring him to be anti-racist. It's like this. Is, it's like the surfing thing with Jonah Hill. It's yeah. like this is what you're hiring me for. Yeah, I'm a racist. I'm not. We gonna keep not going do back that. to Jonah Hill, yeah, even though yeah, all three of us are big Jonah Hill defenders. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Famously, as established by Chat. Well, you guys aren't, but I am. And now I sucked you into it. <laughs> you did. Yeah. All, all your Jonah Hill defending was commentary. making me nervous. In yeah. The corner. Yeah. What could possibly be so serious that it makes him question his future in the industry? For the first time, I have to say that I believe many of those in charge in the right-leaning media are actually at odds with what's best for you, the viewer, the customer, uh, and more importantly, racism. the country. Gosh, here we go. We here at Mug Club, we thought that we were all in this together, that we were fighting the, the, the media, entertainment, industrial complex. But too many of those in charge of the big conservative platforms um, are verifiably in bed with them. Big tech is in bed with big con. The people you thought, the people I thought were fighting for you, a lot of it has been a big con. Now that is obviously a very provocative statement, and I have to think that Stephen chose his words very carefully here. He's trying to elicit interest, teasing us into believing there's some big bad enemy out to attack the little guy. He's hyping up whatever yeah, it is we're guy. about to hear next as some earth-shattering revelation they could expose. What little guy doesn't get 50 million contracts yeah. though? Like but all the little guys are getting that, right? He's also doing the whole like um, drinking his own Kool-Aid thing, like pretending that conservatives are in cahoots with big corporations he's like oh yeah oh, these guys and big tech are like together and oh it's yeah like, no you're the only one who's saying they're not like yeah yeah no they they absolutely are that he was a truth teller in many respects yeah, yeah yeah i love that conversation because there was like correct statements being expressed on both sides because they just like hate each other now mm. they were just like flinging shit by just like outing very like well-known talking points conservative media as we know it. What is Big Con and who's a part of it? Well, he doesn't exactly tell us, at least not in this video, but he does go on to detail a contract that he had been offered by an unnamed conservative media group, which included terms so restrictive and offensive that Stephen went so far as to call it a slave contract. I will transition <laughs> Mug Club into a full-scale network with independent content creators who don't want to be locked into slave contracts. There's no need to be enslaved like this. These terms basically said that if Steven's YouTube channel got demonetized again, he could see his payment listed in the contract slashed as much as 25% by the company making the offer. But again, doesn't say who that is. If blank is boycotted or dropped by more than 50% of uh, the advertising partners, the company is not able to replace him within 90 days, the fee will be reduced by 25%. Though Steven does say enough to allege that whoever offered him this deal is deliberately it's trying to take advantage of him. Suggesting their you hold them up. Yeah, yeah anyway, you spray them and bowing down to censorship to the detriment of conservative principles, and that smaller conservative personalities should be mindful of any deal that may be presented to them to avoid getting locked into something they can't get this out. Is so anti-free market. Subdue you a little bit. Yeah. Just 
to soften your edges a little bit. Just play ball a little more so we can keep our content all monetized. I won't do that. And I'm willing to bet that most of you won't either. Let me know just how many of you won't. Let me know how many of you will just go the extra mile of racism. <laughs> like, how dare these guys openly in the contract tell me I should just stick to dog whistles and not just go full fucking, you know, KKK. Fucked up. More fancy uh, it's compelling, though. Like, no they, more, they no more like, re, re uh, doing, like, the George Floyd execution, but obviously not <laughs> in the same way because he didn't get executed, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> you know, fuck, it's so bad. Enter in your email at stopbigcon. Com. This, as Stephen probably planned, ignited wide speculation of who could have offered this slave contract in the first place. But most seem to assume Ben Shapiro's very own Daily Wire is the culprit. The company that employs Candace Owens, Matt Walsh, Jordan Peterson. I mean, they're one of the biggest sites out there. I think, you know what I just realized? If you were to ask every single person in Stephen Crowder's fan base, would you rather, would you have $50 million and you can only use dog whistles? <laughs> like, there would not be a single person in that fan base that would say uh, no to that contract. No. Every single person would say yes to that contract. Fuck it. People in my audience would go the extra mile and, like, become conservative commentators that don't, you know, push the boundaries so much that they get demonetized. Who the fuck would say no to that? Yeah, everyone's saying I would. Yeah, like, it's listen. ridiculous. Yeah, it's not. It's just like an absurd amount of money. Yeah, people have gone to kick and uh, went on the fuck Hassan train for much less, okay? <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. And as confirmed by their <laughs> CEO, Jeremy Boring, in his own video the following day, the Daily Wire had in fact approached Steven with this lucrative contract they believed was not only fair, but grossly misrepresented by Steven no, in his Will. video. Now, if there's anything I know about Jeremy Boring, it's that he lives up to his f***ing name. So I'm going to try to get through this snooze fest as fast as we can. Something we have to understand before going further, though, Will, is that we love Steven, Steven Crowder, Crowder well, gets banned a lot. It's kind of his thing, really. He actually controversial, gets punished for it, then cries victim. It's pathetic, but you have to understand this works for Steven's brand. It helps drive more traffic over to his own website, making people think that you're constantly on the brink of losing your platform will galvanize them to support you in other more profitable ways. They purchase the content, you lock behind a paywall, the they buy your merch, subscriptions, whatever it is. Steven's fans are more likely to buy Mug Club when the threat of suspension is constantly looming over Steven's brand. But losing his YouTube revenue would also mean less money is being funneled to the Daily Wire if they were to ever partner. And even though the Daily Wire would be willing to cover a lot of the financial burden if they were to lose advertisers as a result of Steven's controversial segments, as a company looking to make money, they still have to consider their own best interests. And that's all this was meant to accomplish. You say... Hey, yeah, that's kind of capitalism, isn't it? Yeah. Just free market. You think about it. Interesting that Steven Crowder all of a sudden is like pro labor Insulate rights. Insulate me from the No, he want he wants labor rights uh for racism. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> It's like, it's you kind of fucked up. Racist. Yeah. Well, it's the same in the end anyway, because you're still telling him, if you say something YouTube doesn't like, we're taking away your money. Well, no, if, if YouTube would be the one taking away the money. We're just saying that we can't bear the entire brunt of that. After all, as Forbes outlines, the Daily Wire is one of the biggest outlets on Facebook by a wide margin and appears on the top 10 Apple podcast charts. They can't. It's because of how censored they are, though. Really? That's totally. what's going on. <laughs> Gaia, get down. Get down. Aww. Down. It's so hard. Oh, oh yes. She did a, that she power. looks so defiant. She does it. She looks so fucking defiant when I tell her to get down. What are you looking at? No. It's a pound snail can't be putting themselves at such risk of losing that position since existing on Facebook helps them reach so She's many so people. Perfect. So of course, from a business perspective, it makes sense for the Daily Wire to include that specific clause in the contract. If Stephen is earning them less money, then why should he be paid the full $50 million they've offered him? Which, yeah, is something else Stephen conveniently left out of his original video. I wonder why that is. Could it make him look ungrateful? Like a whiny baby looking for charity in the form of 
of tens of millions of dollars? Steven's philosophy seems to be, I deserve to be paid millions and millions and millions of dollars, whether Ooh. my show drives the revenue or not. That's not a business relationship. That, he's not looking for a business relationship. He's looking for a benefactor. Because just to summarize here, but that Steven is Crowder what, was offered like, a payout of- If you're of a political movement, of course, you gotta insulate your bravest warriors. <laughs> of course, of course he's looking for a benefactor because that's how these operations are run. Yeah. yeah. Steven Crowder has never worked in an institution, which by the way, Jeremy Boring correctly pointed out, again, spicy. Uh, he had never, up until that moment, ever worked in a media outlet that wasn't just running red and uh, quite literally getting money from oil barons yeah, to yeah. keep cutting the same propaganda they were cutting. Wait, surely Daily Wire takes the same money from... Yes, Daily Wire runners. was started again by uh, oil barons, literally. Um, they claim to be in the, in the green now, but... Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't believe it. Well, they open their own oil wells, probably because they yeah. didn't pay Stephen fifty million dollars to, <laughs> yeah, finally. to join the show. I think that more content creators, even the ones who don't get involved in politics, should talk about how this freak says the most vile shit without getting a real meaningful punishment. But if anyone else says bitch in the first thirty seconds of their video, they might get their channel deleted. Yeah, it's yeah, really fucked yeah, it's up. Fucked. YouTube monetization is so fucked. The fact that Steven Crowder can be monetized, and yet like most of my videos that I make are unmonetized yeah. after a day until I fucking complain publicly on Twitter. And then there's a, there's already been a manual review by the way. And then they magically get remonetized is so frustrating. I was don't even, when they're manually no, reviewed, they, they still get rejected. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah, that's what fucked. I'm saying. Yeah. I get manually reviewed, they reject it. And then I'll, sometimes I'll go back to YouTube and I'll look at the YouTube and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? There's like yeah. 11 videos in a row have been demonetized. Yeah. Like, and not all of these are like really spicy subjects either. Uh, what is happening here? And then I'll tweet about it and then they'll magically re-monetize again. <laughs> Just sticking into your back. It's awesome. $50 million it's over the span of four years with a guarantee of a little under 200 episodes per year, which equates to only four 90 minute broadcasts a week, not to mention a four week minimum vacation. That's what Steven calls a slave yeah, contract. Oh, but Jeremy really was quickly backed up by the <sighs> Daily Wire's oh, yeah. biggest personality, oh, yeah. Steven's yeah. own yeah. former yeah. best yeah. friend, Ben yeah. Shapipi yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. My coochie pink, my booty oh, hole brown. As well as his own broadcast yeah. later that week. Oh, it was only yeah. after this exchange that uh, Stephen brought out the big guns, publicly releasing a phone call between him and Jeremy Boring that Stephen had recorded without the CEO's knowledge. I motherfuckers who say I didn't want to do this are always motherfuckers who wanted to do it, by <laughs> yeah. the way, straight up. Yes, this was supposed to prove how unreasonable and slimy Jeremy was being, but he kind of proved the opposite just by being this much of a snake, I think. Let's say it's a kid who comes in with 500,000 YouTube subscribers or something like that, 100,000. Let's say it's some other kid you're paying you're paying six figures to come in and do it. There's, there's not the penalty of the demonetization or if they're removed from iTunes, Apple, YouTube. Yeah, sure there would be. If making money off of those platforms is part of how you're justifying the salary you're paying someone, then when, or the fee you're, well, I keep saying salary, the fee you're paying someone, then when those go away, Everybody loses money. You can't pay the same amount with less revenue. How about you create a different business model? Even when you listen to the call itself, Jeremy sounds anything but uncharitable to Steven, politely explaining his company's position while Steven moans about wanting to be more offensive than what the Daily Caller will allow. If he really wants to be a provocative Daily idiot, wire. then he needs to accept the consequences that Steven's could YouTube follow channel as a result. They're still willing to work with no, him, no, even in the event that insane. he- insane. You mean Mug Club or no. like the merch? No, not even yeah. with the fucking no, mug club. No. No, 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 They're getting a lot better since you yeah. went to France. I don't know what yeah. happened over there. Yeah, I, I learned. No, that's, uh, it, it's, it's insane. Of course they're not making 50 yeah. million. And even if with a 25% cut, 37 million, still way more than his channel's making. So 100%, 100,000%. Yeah, but what about the little racists, huh? Yeah. yeah. I think of the, the grassroots. That's what racist. is like, Genuinely fucking frustrating. Muck Club probably makes like 10K max. No, it probably no, makes more. So ah, much. I reckon that. But I doubt that Steven Crowder makes. I don't think I don't think, I don't think he makes more money. Yeah. I don't think he makes more, think he makes more than I, I do. I don't think. Yeah, I reckon he would make a lot from Muck Club, but that's probably all cancelled now. Like, 
No, no, no he Mug still Club's has it. Thing. Yeah, uh, he still has it. But many people don't Before, like it. Before, though, Mug Club was, like, uh, under the Blaze banner. So it was just, like, all the money was going to the Blaze. Mm. So he wanted to make it his own thing. What I'm saying with Mug Club and, like, Black Rifle Coffee, when did, like, conservatives become, like, those, like, really lame millennials that, like, don't talk to me until I've had my coffee kind of go? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's such yeah. a weird branding. Yeah, you know what, well, you, know you don't understand. Saying? That's like, these are big badasses, dude. These are veterans who say racist stuff. And love coffee. <laughs> and love coffee. Everybody <laughs> loves coffee. Come on. He man. gets banned. It would just equate to a marginally smaller profit. 25% less. This isn't about big tech. It's about business. And the reality that when you play stupid games, sometimes you win stupid prizes. You just can't expect a company like the Daily Wire to abandon all of its interests just to accommodate your Don't annoying edginess. It. Calm down and grow the fuck up. But it only got pettier from there. With Ben doubling down his support for Jeremy tweeting, It's nasty to attack my company and Daily Wire Plus host as a big con by lying about the meaning of a non-binding term sheet. It's despicable to plan weeks in advance to attack my best friend and your friend by setting up and secretly taping a phone call all to grow your email list. Sorry, that's the best Shapiro voice I can do. And I'm not that's done, so get used to it. Prior to October 5th, Stephen's agent requests we send an offer. October 5th, we submit a non-binding term sheet. November 2nd, Stephen tells Jeremy he wants $30 million per year and us to send him a new offer, refusing to redline the term sheet. November 14th, we told Stephen we couldn't do that. December 12th, Stephen apparently registers StopBigCon.com, knowing he's leaving the blaze, and that we haven't provided him an offer to his liking. Stephen needed a plan. Attacking us was the plan. December 15th, Stephen announces he's leaving the blaze. January 7th, Stephen texts Jeremy in friendly fashion to ask if they could talk. Jeremy 9th, I mean, sorry, what? January 9th, Stephen calls Jeremy and secretly tapes him. This means 96 days elapsed between when he received the term sheet and when he secretly taped Jeremy. And it means that 36 days elapsed between when he decided to attack Daily Wire and Jeremy by purchasing StopBigCon. And when he called Jeremy to tape him. Grouse, once more. If you actually care about the supposedly horrific non-binding first offer term sheet offering $50 million for four years, Jeremy reads it line by line here. It is quite simple. If your show loses money, you lose money. This is how capitalism works. You know who knows this? Steven Crowder. That's why he has a piss off YouTube segment in which he deliberately does not say the things that will get him kicked off of YouTube and directs people behind his paywall. He must be a show for YouTube or something. Okay, that's it. I'm done. Sorry. I, I had to. I had to, okay? For the first time I think ever, Ben was publicly duking it out with the man he had started a career alongside. And he wasn't alone either. The Daily Wire's own Candace Owens referred to Stephen making a total bitch move, and Jordan Peterson uh, originally sided with Stephen, tweeting out Stephen's initial video before deleting it as soon as he realized uh -huh. it was about the company that employed him. Good save there, man. The reality is that Stephen benefits from big tech just as much as the Daily Wire does. Without mainstream platforms like YouTube and Facebook, these guys wouldn't be able to have such an empire of their own. These sites may have basic rules on what they'll allow, but Stephen cannot deny they make it possible to run and operate a brand outside of the conventional networks that are usually far more predatory than what the Daily Wire was offering. As journalist Danny DiPlacido put it, Crowder, Shapiro, Owens, and Peterson all use the platforms of big tech to boost their brand and become wealthy, powerful influencers, all while bitterly complaining that the odds were stacked against them, mm. while the millions of dollars floating around in the conservative media sphere tell a radically different story. The nerve of Steven Crowder to complain about such a generous contract from the comfort of his cushy job as a mouthpiece for the Republican oh, Party. Yeah, where are the fucking, Especially where are the considering big what else we would learn about Stephen's business Xi Jinping, where are you? over the following months. <laughs> but this all only came to light after a series of allegations that shined a light on Stephen's more impulsive personal side, putting him at further odds with an audience that was already beginning to turn on him. Stephen has a lot going on. Yes, that's the best way to say it. There's a lot going on, and that should be clear because people don't do stuff like this if there's not a lot going on in their life. I would like to implore my audience and everybody that is paying attention to the situation. I don't want to go into cage. But to pray for him. After a cryptic uh, message from in. Candace Owens hinting at some kind of personal difficulties in Stephen's life that would explain his recent falling out with the Daily Wire, Stephen took to his Thank own you. channel to publicize his divorce from, from his wife, Hillary. But if you if you've watched so this video bored, already, yeah. you know it's kind of f***ing strange. Let's go through it. Since 2021, I've been living through what has increasingly been a horrendous <sighs> divorce. Now let me say on the outset to be clear, there is no infidelity, no, any kind of life. It's just so wild to not side. think about the optics of anything and he's no, doing. Like, he's just so convinced that uh, he's my right. Choice. My then wife decided that she didn't want to be married anymore. 
And in the state of Texas, that is that, it's enough. Completely permitted. And I still yeah. believe that children <laughs> need a mom and a dad. They don't ask the husband if uh, if the woman's but allowed in to divorce legal him. System, my beliefs don't matter. In Texas, divorce is oh. permitted. When one party She's wants really it, jumping out of this, so. period. So one of the first things you'll notice is Stephen's repeated mentioning of no-fault divorce laws in Texas, which allow either party to leave a marriage without cause, which as many have noted is kind of a really weird oh, thing yeah. to bring up given the context here. Yeah. Like, how are we supposed to read that exactly? Do you want your wife to stay with you against the her will? Should, should she not be allowed to, to leave? Yeah. This is the implicit message a lot of people picked it's up insane. on in this video. But I learned it also tracks with state he's made in the past. Oh, the if big ball, the big dick. marriage to nothing more than a go. hopeless endeavor, well, then you open the floodgates. Oh, yeah. it, it doesn't matter. You can have no-fault divorce laws. And, you know, I think it's, Alexa it's was eating all the, all the time. And it yeah. follows a bizarre pattern of men today becoming increasingly critical of no-fault divorce, even in abusive situations. A year in oh, I hate these guys. It gets really, really abusive. Oh, that's fucking you, destiny. From both. Is so that anyone, destiny? Anyone, yeah. Anyone, so really. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. My, my point is, I'm just, yeah, even though it might be rare from what you guys think uh, if it would happen what would you it's recommend convenient. for yeah. those people to do would they divorce or do you want them there to are divorce? so many guys on that side. This I mean, not a real thing. even though it might be like physically yeah, abusive you gotta endure people are too you want to stick in people are just See, i mean like, look, people I'm, nowadays I'm are just everybody quits everybody gives up it's too hard i'm this xyz this is why i'm special so i can up this entire situation based upon me being special. It's just a very Damn. strange thing for Steven to harp on like this much. Hustler. Just like how he feels yeah, the need to clarify that his kids had nothing to do with the separation. Now, and all this one thing I want to be really clear about is certain. True North here is Giddy that my children are blameless. Completely without fault. I was like, what? thank God you cleared that one up. For a minute there, I was you convinced can't. your two-year-old twins were the culprit. <laughs> so glad you put those rumors to bed. Stephen ultimately wants everyone to know that this yeah, divorce they is not something they and Gaga way wanted, too fucking despite hard, Despite it being dude. alleged after the fact that Hillary only filed for divorce in December 2021, after she learned Stephen had been talking to divorce lawyers himself a month prior, so that's all a bit questionable. But you know, I'm not exactly I one to take curious. Stephen He's Crowder's word at no face reason. value at this point. In fact, he's so incapable of taking a sliver of accountability, the only thing he blames himself for is picking wrong. She wanted uh, something uh. else for her life. That's not my choice. She simply wanted out, and the law says that that's how it works. Now, of course- Again, he just keeps saying that, like, he keeps saying it like he wishes the law would not allow her to leave. <laughs> That's very strange, man. It's small government unless someone personally wants to break up with me. Then- then, then we want big government. Yeah. They should be sent to jail, but we should also still be together. Yeah. Yeah. She put course, in jail look, with me. I get it. There are multiple sides to every story, but one thing that is undeniable uh, in this case is that it's no one's fault but my own in that I picked wrong. And that's certainly that's not- That's the only thing I did wrong here. I picked the wrong- I picked the wrong woman. The fault of my children. Yeah, I don't think <sighs> that's the issue here, but you, well, whatever, man. Steven spends the rest of the video accusing Candace of extortion, which she didn't exactly take kindly, to say the least. Steven Crowder on election night was our friend. He was on the backstage with all of us, laughing, having a great time. He even sent me a retrospectively very flirty message oh, thereafter on Instagram just. about how nice I looked on election night, even though I didn't Oy. respond to it. It's very erratic to go from being friends with somebody, being with them on election night, laughing, having a great time, to suddenly wanting to ruin their entire company. This is what I was thinking. This is a broken man who is on some sort of a spiral. It is likely his divorce that led to this moment. He's acting erratic, he's acting panicked, and this at least gives us gives us some sort of an excuse for why he behaved this way. I then went on to my platform and I said, pray for Steven Crowder, honestly, because that's what he needs, he needs a prayer. And apparently nobody- She said, bless, it, bless her heart. That's what she did, which is like a very common Southern thing to say, for those of you who don't know, the Australians. You know that? You know no. what that's saying? Like, like oh, bless thing? your heart. Yeah, oh, when you like say, bad. like, bless it's your like heart, it means, like, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. You fucking piece of I shit. I saw the other day, this this dude was, like, abusing a, a server. Um, at, at a restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was going off, and then at the end, he walks on and says, God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, what? Yeah, that that's, nice how Christians, that's how Christians operate. They'll say, like, bless, bless your heart. <laughs> he's answering those prayers right now because he's still acting erratic. He's now upping the ante and suggesting uh -huh. that I this guy. 
you root. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it was That's weird. essentially what he asked her on election day. The, it's yeah. weird. It's like, <laughs> this server came up and said, do you root? Do you root? <laughs> I reckon I root heaps. I root heaps. And you sound like an Australian fuckboy. Can you boy. say that? I root heaps. I root heaps. I root heaps. Yeah, that's... I've oh, you, I thought you wanted me to say it. Yeah, you can, you can say that. It's, yeah, yeah. I, wrote, I wrote heaps is a very normal thing. I root say. heaps. <laughs> or you, so or you could say he roots heaps. If someone yeah. fucks a lot, you say yeah, he, he, roots he roots heaps. heaps. Yeah. Alexa, he roots heaps. I extorted him. I will not take that lightly. Another detail that Stephen did miraculously forgot to include in this video is that Hillary made a specific and private request via attorney that he not oh, discuss their shit. divorce publicly at Sick. all, according to Yashar Ali, whose Substack article we will be discussing in depth. This article, this of course, fucked. was published alongside yeah. the yeah. now so infamous bad. ring camera footage. In which it's Stephen crazy that he just had access to this by the wife. wife. In summer 2021, yeah, while got she was this still pregnant the wife. with their family some publicly, kind of cartoonish so villain as he chomps away at a cigar and barks <laughs> orders at the soon-to-be mother of the his children, it, demanding she fulfill all. her wife's About woman, yeah. and Bro, she is literally barefoot and pregnant, which is like another common conservative trope. Yeah. It's like women need to be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. And like, and it is wild that he is just like screaming like a baby Same. at his insanely pregnant wife. Yeah and arguing why she isn't allowed to take their one car to the store as if this is some kind of change my mind segment. It's not weird to have a camera there at all. What are you talking about? It's an entry point into the house. <laughs> it is the most normal place to have a camera. If you're, if you're making 50 million in four years, I'm pretty sure you need cameras around your house because yeah. I would want to break in there. Yeah. Allegedly. Or or break in there and stay there for months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then never That's leave. That's a better way of doing it. <laughs> if you refuse to do wifely things, then I will go pick up the groceries. American groceries. Steaks, wood pellets, my grill. My grill. I need to grill. You're not taking the car. You are not. Then I will ask them to pick me up. Would you like me to ask? Oh, that's right. It's not about Steven. Give it an Uber. Watch it. Okay, Steven, I can't. You want to walk out right now? Listen to me. I can't go to the gym. I can't go to my parents. I can't call my friends. I can't go. I can't be home. You're going to take the car and leave me here. Hillary, just think of how boxed in you've made me. What do you need me to pick up? I'll get it. I'll be back when I'm back. No. She's like, even... Or you'll be back when you're back. Oh, oh, shit. oh God. I this love that. Fucked. No, it's so sick. When he says, that doesn't work for me either. It's I'm, so good. I'm boxed in here. Yeah. A fully I'm grown man in his garage. Cigar. Yeah. Blowing oh. cigar smoke on my incredibly pregnant wife's <laughs> face. <laughs> You're boxing me in, Hillary. It doesn't work for me either. <laughs> Fucking oh. hell. Look at that cartoon thing where he blows smoke in his, own, his wife's <laughs> face. <laughs> Every Redditor in response to this video said, I hate Steven, but we can't make conclusions from an out-of-context video when this came out. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, just... I want to see how he abused her after this as well. Yeah. Okay, listen. This this is a little bit more open and shut than the fucking Joan Hill shit, yeah. okay? <laughs> like, what the fuck are we doing here? You know what I mean? This is like an established relationship, uh, a, a marriage. Uh, him literally pushing every Redditor in ICC. Yeah, okay, I don't care. Listen, there's there's enough context here. Like, this is not out of context. Even the Jonah Hill shit wasn't out of context. It was in context. How the fuck does this guy make so much money and still can't get another car? I am on Centrelink and I have two cars. Okay, hey. first of all. Centrelink. Shout out to Centrelink. Oh, is, is it Aussie? That's, yeah, it's Australian. the Australian welfare. It's like okay. youth allowance, job seeker. See, these oh, those are all Australian terms. These yeah. fucking guys on the dole, they got two cars, <laughs> <Yeah>. mate. <laughs> exactly. Fucking. Based on a current affair. Yeah. The dole bludger buying 50 cars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, we got to watch current affairs yeah, more, too. Oh, there'll be so many dole bludger ones. <laughs> yeah, dole bludger? <laughs> Wait, didn't you just say that? No, oh, I said oh. on the dole. Oh, yeah, dole oh, bludger yeah. is like dole dole. a guy who doesn't want to work and just gets welfare. You know who I heard like that king. from, that term for the first time? The dole? No. Uh, what's the guy? Revolt or Revolve, the, the fashion guy? The manager? Oh, oh that's really? the first time I ever heard, uh, yeah, the dole. like be welfare being referred to as the dole. Yeah, they, the, say, they say it in, in England as well. Yeah. Yeah. The fucking dole. Good on ya, numpties fair dinkum. What? 
That's not as right. Numpties <laughs> is a thing, but I only started hearing it recently. The fuck is fair dinkum? People fair say dinkum. Ah, oh, fair dinkum's good. It just means like, well, it just I don't means know. good. Yeah. So that's fair dinkum. It's like good. It also sometimes means authentic. <laughs> it's like a fair dinkum <laughs> I Aussie. Realize how dumb fair yeah. dinkum sounds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's mainly good. <laughs> it's not a joke either. It's Australian fair is dinkum. so strange. <laughs> What Australian hood are they from? Uh, for the record, Zero, the reason why he has one car, this is speculation, but we, we think it's, uh, you know, control. it's reasonable to speculate, but it's for possibly for control. Yeah. Like, because, dude, he's definitely rich enough to have right. two vehicles. Okay, come <laughs> on. Like, come the fuck on. Pick up. I'll get it. I'll be back when I'm back. No, that doesn't work either. You'll be back when I'm back. I love that. I had to run it back. I had to run it back. <laughs> It doesn't work either. <laughs> now, this is another point of contention. Many what does he want to do? Been quick to, to get question. your groceries Why the leave? fuck does Steven Crowder, a man worth tens of millions of dollars at least, have only one car to split between mm. him and his wife? All we can do as outsiders is speculate. But it has been said how abusers tend to keep just one car at the house as a way to stifle their partner. Like if Jonah Hill had one car for him and his girlfriend, uh, it's over. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> That's the we get one. That's, the, that's where I draw the line. That's where I know the red flags are enough for me to be like, okay, he's doing it on purpose. There's mobility and independence, forcing them to stay reliant on their abusive spouse, which makes it harder to escape an abusive situation that is both mentally penis. and logistically. Regardless, Stephen insists his wife, who is eight <laughs> months pregnant with twins Sorry, at this thought. point, might have... It's like penis. it's like smoky almost. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you don't want it to be smoky. No, <laughs> no but it is. It's a stinky penis. <laughs> that, that bull had it's dick cheese, dude. It's penis. really bad. It's not fair dinkum. <laughs> no, no, that's not fair dinkum. No, <laughs> no, no, it's not fair dinkum. And I emphasize, should take an Uber for the errands he insists she complete, which include fetching steaks and grill pellets for her husband. <laughs> She's the, literally doing this for the grill him, pellets and be he hard still if is sitting pregnant. here treating her like a misbehaving child, expressing her. The other thing was also that he wanted her to like give the dog the uh medication like the cancer meds that the dog needed but like because she's pregnant she was like i don't want to touch this medication because like they usually say like on it on it like you know don't handle this if you're pregnant most medication will have some like that oh here it is on the screen never mind demanding that she handle medicine for his dog she was concerned was toxic and pregnant concerned that the dog food she'd be dealing with could potentially be harmful for pregnant women not that steven would care about any of that he's smoking a fucking cigar in front of a pregnant woman for god's sake so much for caring about the safety of the unborn huh Steve? Yeah, those exactly. are his own children he's hurt <laughs> if that's any indication of what an amazing my father kids did nothing wrong i mean it's frankly hard not to get them mad out of my wife in the video yeah. steven becomes they did nothing wrong. They're they're a little fucked up. They they are now unfortunately disabled because yeah. because I smoked cigars <laughs> all the time around my pregnant wife. I but it's okay. Dog cancer medication. Yeah. <laughs> was more agitated as he asks if Hillary's feeling some constraint and says if she takes the car to, again, get his groceries, then he won't be able to go to the gym, see his parents, or his friends. Just tragic stuff. But you know what would solve that? <laughs> Using a fraction of your wealth to buy a second car, maybe. I don't know. Stephen goes on to demand Hillary show him respect and that discipline is the only way she's getting out of this, whatever the hell that means. She's an adult woman, not a dog. The only way out of this it's this is fucked. I feel yeah, like it's disgusting. This yeah. is just bad. I also think it's really weird that he's just like smoking a cigar at twelve thirty seven in his backyard. But I guess like is that a good time to smoke a cigar? Yeah. Like why the fuck do you smoke a cigar by yourself? Because in your cool. backyard. Is it is it like pain addiction? <laughs> yeah, it's also No, dry. it's not smoke a cigarette like a normal human. What the fuck? Yeah, the cigar's a big manly thing. But yeah, if no one is there to see you smoke it, why would you do it? No, nah, people like the taste. I was addicted to cigars. You were addicted to cigars? <laughs> yeah. Why, it's a really, really, really dumb is story. a Cuban revolution? Yeah, oh, really. Of course. No, I, was, I was on exchange in Colombia and I was going to go to Cuba. And I was like, I'm going to smoke cigars there, but I don't want to be like an idiot gringo who doesn't know how to smoke them. So I'm like, I'm going to practice every day, practice smoking a cigar. And then after 30 days, I was like, oh, wait, I'm just addicted, addicted to cigars now. Turns out you can't practice smoking. Yeah, yeah, you, just, you just become a smoker. I had that with math and heroin. Yeah. I was like, I'll practice a little bit. Yeah. So I look impressive while doing it. 
Yeah, when you were coming to America? Yeah. <laughs> Just addicted. We're actually the meth capital. Australia. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. We, Aren't you guys a gambling capital, too? And that. Yeah. It goes hand in hand. Everyone on meth is a winner. True. Yeah. 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 You give up so easily. I just said the only way out of this is discipline and respect. You said, then we're at an impasse. Stephen, no, we are at an impasse. Hillary assures Stephen that ass. she loves him and is committed to their marriage. But Stephen not only replies with, I don't love you, he insists that if she were truly committed, she'd put on gloves to deal with the toxic dog medication. And I, I need some space. We need to just talk and baby for a little bit, okay? I love you. I love you very much. I don't love you. That's the big problem. I've never Whoa. seen both of you, and the fact is when I go, look, Bitch I mean, you A, B, C, and D, you just be just about it, you know, no. I'm gonna take her but out I love you more than life itself. she okay. needs to pee? Where is her? Is Put on some gloves. No. But I love you more than life itself. It's, it's not fair. Like it's not fair, and it's disingenuous. Become someone, let's see day in and day out, worthy of a life worth, no, not as a wife. I didn't say as a wife. Hillary, Hillary, come on now. I'm not going to engage. I'm not going to engage anymore. And as Hillary calls his abuse sick, Stephen snaps back with a stern, watch Stitch. it. I love you, but Stephen, Stephen, your abuse is sick. Uh, yeah. Stitch. Watch Stitch. it. Sick. Watch it. Watch it. Yeah, watch it. Fuck. And watch it. The two eventually head inside, where Stephen and Hillary have both confirmed that Stephen shouted the words, I will f you up, before Hillary took the car and retreated to her parents' Hi, house, please. afraid for what Stephen could have done had she stayed in the home. I'll get text you what you need, I'll get you what you need. Why are you. I mean, I, I guess, I was say, why is she not in prison? I guess if you didn't. I love you. Actually, beat her. I'm committed to you. This is so fucked. How is she still saying I love you after yeah. someone says I'll fuck you up? Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to Are you committed enough to do those things? Back. You're not committed to anything. You're not committed Why is to he anything. Not doing it? You just said I love you, I'm committed to it. Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? Walk the dogs while I sit here and smoke a cigar. Put on some gloves. Are you committed enough to get the medication the dogs? When approached for comment, Hillary's family issued the following statement to Yashar. Hillary is currently living alone in Dallas, apart from her family and support system in Michigan, and is focused on taking care of her young children. She is not prepared at this time to speak about her divorce becoming public or the misleading statements made by Stephen about their relationship. The truth is that Hillary spent years hiding Stephen's mentally and emotionally abusive behavior from her friends and family while she attempted to save their marriage. She was the one who was asking to work on the relationship to keep the marriage intact for their unborn children. In June of 2021, Stephen left their home to pursue elective like, surgery. Hillary kids? urged him to get the help he needed and to imagine him his being abuse your dad. with the hope that oh, their marriage that. could be fuck saved that. and that they could peacefully live together Just as a family. Instead, Stephen refused to do so and chose not to be with his wife during the, the birth of their twin children. After the birth, Stephen bought a townhouse and left their home permanently. Hillary was unaware that Stephen had hired a divorce attorney and asked his assistant to cut Hillary off financially. There is significant documentation substantiating psychopath. these facts. We yeah. hope that Stephen will cease speaking publicly he about, care his about his personal his matters in an untruthful no. manner. We also look forward to there being full transparency in the legal process so there is fairness and accountability for the actions that caused the divorce and to ensure the outcome is what is in the best interest of the young children. Stephen's response to this leak is pretty much what you'd expect, that his words were taken out of context and that the footage we saw was deceptively edited something that steven has had i mean there was no cut doing, to that. No, no. <laughs> look, broken marriages are ugly and in them people do ugly they made her look more pregnant than she actually yeah, yeah, they come made on. Her no, i wasn't bigger. smoking his guy that hard wasn't that much smoke yeah due to recent misleadingly edited leaks to the tabloid press without context and not subject to consequences of the court i'm just wondering what no context cuts. could justify threatening to up your pregnant wife. I'm curious if Stephen has a defense for that. So today, I have filed a motion to officially unseal all files as they relate to the matter of legal I remember records, this, finances, I remember of relevant medical records, including mental health history or evaluations, depositions, and any She's crazy, everybody. She's crazy. Of Texas. I will not be leaking private marital information to the press, but if the privacy agreements are not...
But also at the same time, I will, I will. subtly imply that I'm going to do exactly that and also mention to everybody that wants to speculate that I am, you know, I'm, I'm claiming that my, my wife is crazy. Respected by all parties, I will address all that is a matter of irrefutable legal record in full context next week. But some of the supporters he still has left have made the argument that, well, all marriages are hard. One example of an argument isn't enough evidence of abuse. Though Yashar, who publicized the video in the first place, goes on to cite a series of texts and audio messages from Stephen that he personally reviewed before publishing his story, of which Stephen reportedly admitted numerous times to having a volcanic temper, and that he has been working to control it through therapy. Though at one point in the audio messages, as Yashar testifies, Stephen Crowder gets upset because he is frustrated that he is not getting enough credit for not having lost his temper for <laughs> months, but adds that he can't promise he won't lose it again I in my wife in Another months. point to note here is that me. Stephen and his Please. wife exchanged a series of messages the day before the birth of their twins, in which Hillary pleaded video is Jay Aubrey's video chat. one last time, stating, Stephen, I'm afraid of you and your rage. You are scary. You scare me. I want to heal things, but you have to take responsibility. Stop Cloud blaming chasing. others. Why was cloud chasing? Who amongst us hasn't uh, been in a deadlocked in a relationship for years and years and have many children, or I mean, have uh, carry the twin twins of the guy uh, only to serve the top of the hour ad break, hey. which goes to the top of the hour. Uh, it's hard to do this while also trying to fucking maintain no control of this it. fucking demon <laughs> in the background. You know what I mean? Do you um, work on putting that would hurt your back? It hurts. It hurts my back a lot. Yeah. yeah. Kai, Kai, down. Down, 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 down. Down. Damn. Down, Kyer. Down. Down. Kyer, down. Top of the hour ad breaks scare me constantly. Yeah, me yeah, too. Me too. Yeah, eat the penis. Eat the penis. Oh, look at the penis. Where's the penis? Oh, don't even touch it, dude. Oh, God. Nope. She's like, oh nope, God. not interested. Or no, or. Too stinky for her. Yeah. She loves that stinky shit. Uh, anyway, I, I'm afraid of uh, top of the hour ad break as well. <laughs> when, I, when I'm not a subscriber. But if I'm a subscriber, it doesn't matter. Here's the three minute ad break now. Stop feeling pain and sadness only for yourself. Almost but it's done. not like this is the only instance Enough. we have of Stephen losing his temper and flying off the handle. We don't need to hit a button there. I know, but I'm trying to do promotion right now. Steven, let's go live. Let's make this the best show ever. Is this already live? No, but I'm... You have no idea what I could have been doing, and that camera's turned on? Well, yeah, but That's the way you... get in trouble, Brian. But you, you move That's like why a... you get in trouble. You move like a jungle cat. If his own show doesn't indicate he's prone to random emotional outbursts, maybe you'll take the word of his former employees. Shortly after the ring camera footage was published, the New York Post, of all places, reached out to a handful of current and ex-employees, ten of which outlined an alleged pattern of abuse not particularly out of line with the leaked footage we just saw. While most of these names are anonymous, thanks to NDAs, one former employee stated they weren't shocked, but that it was pathetic what he did to Hillary. Telling the Post, this might not be the Steven you see on his show, but that was the real Steven. These individuals claim he ran an abusive company, screamed at employees, including his dad, impulsively gave the order to fire random people over Discord, made his underlings complete personal tasks like wash his laundry, and yes, Steven also had a fun little habit of I'm so shocked to find out that like a guy who's commentary revolves around treating employees poorly <laughs> yeah. and who like hates labor unions so much he got punched out by a union organizer that guy is bad to his workers yeah, surprising this is surprising what's next are you gonna tell me he's abusive to his wife uh, mr traditional values come on come on dude yeah a lot of these motherfuckers like hearing these things but don't actually enjoy it when they actually see what it's like in the real world you know what i mean very weird exposing his genitals to his pals and i don't even have to say allegedly to this one because it's something he's literally done on camera but hey man it's a joke it's, it's all a joke it's funny the only funny thing in this scenario is that it's Stephen funny come on yeah, i got a funny shape he has to show to show his balls to somebody it says quote crowder was known to expose his genitals to staff well, hold on a second yes yeah, well, just, yes just wait I mean, that did happen. I mean, what are you talking about? The Terminator the jokes sketch? Because remember the nudies didn't fit? Now. Oh, is it that right. one, Sam? Yeah. Well, now there are... Was it the E.T. ones uh, through the cornfields where we had to run naked through yeah, the cornfields? Yeah, we were naked in that one, yeah. We were naked in that one, too. That was yeah. a good one.
That was at night, though. Was it gay Captain America? But you know you didn't have to make the skit, right? No one's forcing you to drop trowel around your fellow straight guy friends. I mean, something's going on here. Especially when most of these claims were not a part of any sketches. A grand total of six separate employees told the Post about incidents they witnessed firsthand, with one citing a specific moment in a van coming back from a 2018 event in Illinois where Jared was asleep in the last row. Stephen was in front, and he was joking about what he was going to do, the staffer recalled. He climbed over and dropped his junk on top of Jared's shoulder, going until That's not gay, Jared. That's yeah. the guy. That He's like, come on, you're gay, so you, you love this, right? I mean, was yeah, he, was whatever. Was he a frat guy? What was his, like, I don't think so. He's just Canadian. <laughs> No, he was just, dude, he was just doing that because, you know, he was like, haha, you, I bet you like that, don't you? Yeah. Gay guy. I mean, yeah, my dick's getting hard right now thinking about how funny it is <laughs> to put my dick so close to your face. <laughs> yeah. It's just what boys do, you know? It's That's just true. boys. Just boys yeah. having fun. It's just a funny joke, man. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't know what you're, what you're talking about. It's where Stephen exposed himself to not gay Jared in 2017 during a video shoot. But these employees continued. Another one describing a time they witnessed Stephen put his testicles on his longtime friend John Goodman, who shook off the incident what? and did not return the post. So this is the same John either. Goodman? The... No, it's not like the John Goodman. Oh, God. John Goodman <laughs> it's just like, from... what the fuck? Yeah, the is how is he friends with this guy? Fred Flintstone? <laughs> Yeah, John Goodman works for the the, the <laughs> daily cr louder with Crowder. He comes a in fourth just employee so also alleged over. they saw Stephen expose himself to his former co-host Dave Landau at a conference table. It was childish, but then I found out it was something he did. At first, I took it as him trying to be friendly or one of the guys. Now I see it was a power play. The witness stated, adding, "If your manager at Red Lobster did this, it would be national news." A yeah. lot of these employees contend Stephen surpassed the title of just a tough boss with the way he ran things. Being called an unreasonable micromanager who was not only capable of working every angle of your emotions, but would send out unrealistic assignments after hours and, and set people up you. for failure. <laughs> One former employee adding, it was like a cult where- Yeah, he if you didn't make it, he was like, oh, it's time for the penis again. <laughs> you gotta look at him. All right. <laughs> you are, I, I don't enjoy this any more than you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta do it as a punishment because none of us are gay. Gotta do that to prove that we're Wait, so no. straight. It was so straight. Stay yeah. out. Yeah, just come on. Just hold it. Eye. Hold it with your hands a little bit. You were all in, and that he did not want you having a life outside of it, often blaming employees for projects failing to live up to his expectations. One employee telling the Post, we'd tell him things wouldn't work when a live show in 2018 didn't go as he had planned, adding, I thought surely Steven, who micromanaged the whole thing, is going to take some responsibility here. But accountability from Steven Crowder is a bit much to ask for. Steven instead decided to use the opportunity to gift each of his employees a book titled Extreme Ownership, How U.S. Navy Seals Lead that's and Win. Sick. We all thought we were going that's, to get an apology. That's the right-wing version of like was, um, Jonah weaponizing therapy speak. It's him using yeah. Navy Seals speak to, <laughs> yeah. to, no, to gaslight exactly. his friends. <laughs> exactly. That is precisely what he's doing. It's like a sitcom. His repeated tirades against his own booking agent and father reportedly made former employees uncomfortable. He did it regularly, and it was usually about failing to book someone he wanted on the show. Steven would say, I'm supposed to get stars. I mean, how can you demand respect from your employees when you continuously scream at your own father in front of everybody? I mean, that's, you're a joke. You're being insane. One source concluding, we don't want Steven to suffer. We just want the abuse to stop or at least let future employees know what they're getting themselves in they sound like li like libs yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah we just want the abuse to stop or at least let future employees know what they're getting into like it's so strange how when when the roles reverse <laughs> so all of a personally. sudden you're like wait a minute hmm interesting to. Which, by the way, I can only hope enough people listen to, especially considering all of the job applications Steven is throwing out on Twitter. Okay. With all the
<laughs> I'm serious. And it, when it was hit, I wasn't supposed to talk. And they Dude, said, "It's just like, bro, you literally did that for years." Like he fucking owned you, you little gremlin. I'm just yeah. <laughs> like you're you're a whole ass divorced dad yourself, and you just sat there and ate it from Steven Crowder, who is somehow even less funny than you are. And you, my friend, are not very funny either. So Wait, awesome. was it like a regular colored light bulb? Or was it like red? Uh, it was like a a, a yellow, uh, okay. a pretty bright yellow, like a, okay. a you know like yield. So it's like off camera, but in your eyesight. Yes. And, and I was, would he be the one pressing the button or was there a producer pressing the button? He would press it. So like under, like Mr. Burns, like he had a button under his desk or, or the table. And when it's Steven's turn to talk and Dave needs to shut the F up, he presses this button. me and in those words of... yes wow yeah, but he did yeah. yeah he did that's the system True. that's what yeah, you guys love fucking cut i saw him taking the spot lately he hasn't let these guys talk yeah famously i'm always you know like, he has lines yeah, yeah. There you go. i do no, I, I turn it on i'm, I'm constantly flickering at them but they never things. they never follow it's fucked up Oh, lights on. lights on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He owns me. It, it was just. It was, it was, <laughs> it's funny because like there's enough schizo haters in here that like some of them now believe that <laughs> for the rest of their lives, like they're gonna go along with that as a <laughs> as a line. narrative. Venomous, and I don't know what he was going through at that point, and I just was like, dude, I this is. It was all this projection coming at me. Was this the first time he had yelled at you? In in the in that way, yes, where it has come like out where with I wife. saw a different person <laughs> that I had heard rumors about. I understand that there's going to be a touch of narcissism to anybody who's sort of. I'm not bored. Yeah, I'm. I'm telling them. That I'm. I'm hitting the tell them you're not bored button right now. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not bored. I'm not bored, and I love Hassan. He's very handsome. Dude, they wanted to be on the stream. Yeah, like, we forced I, our way in. Here. I didn't yeah. even. I didn't. I did not ask them because uh, I always feel uh, self conscious. Like I feel like I'm, you know, working them. I love it. You're making the guy on the far right nervous again. Give him a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> You're so handsome. Thank you. You're doing well. You're doing well. That you makes me less that. nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow that makes me feel better. <laughs> uh, <sighs> Yeah, my penis is out underneath this desk. Yeah. It's I'm, actually on my shoulder. It's yeah, I'm OB. forcing them to look at it, and I keep like whipping it around. Yeah, there's just a what mirror over there. Yeah. <laughs> In that field, I get it, but at the same time, it was it was so over the top that I was trying not to laugh. And then he said, "If we were going to tour together in the future, Matt couldn't do his 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 closing bit on stage. Somehow that comes up, so you could tell." There was this projection of how he was angry of how well. What are all these little things that are in the middle? Yeah, they yeah. keep popping up. The anarchist, the cookbook. anarchist cookbook. Like he had fucking Kim Jong Un. I love that he's like cucked by his boss, but he has to pretend that he has some kind of advantage. Like I was actually laughing, yeah. like being berated by a boss. Kind of funny because I don't. Know, that's not a big deal. You yeah, know? it's yeah. not like this was my like life. me, an adult man yeah. who's yeah. like much older, and actually has done stand up. I was just being berated by a, a, a less talented person. Hilarious. He told you to tell your friend who you don't own 
yes. that if he's going to tour with you, he can't end on the closer that kills, that gets standing ovations? He said it was too dirty. You know, he then, this very oddly telling thing, he's like, this is why you don't have any friends. And I was like, what are you, like, Wait, it's literally- Wait, that? Yeah. Aww. I mean, you, I'm sure it's, the phone call was recorded so we can always hear it. And I'm not saying that to be a jerk. I'm just saying that he legitimately records his phone calls. Stephen isn't very good at oh, maintaining you know professional that. or even personal relationships, evidently. And whether it has to do with the bullying he received as a kid, his urge to talk over everyone in the room, or his own jealousy of those he perceives as more talented than him, once you get past all the smoke and mirrors and ignore all the culture war BS, that surrounds his erroneously played up macho man persona, what else do you have left? A failed comedian turned professional crybaby, helplessly pleading to be liked by anyone who will listen. But we're talking about bullying. The reason that bullying in high school- You know what his biggest is issue is? Is a fat face. Yep. <laughs> like he's in shape, he's in like decent shape, but he has a fat face so it doesn't show. Yep, that's my issue too. You what are you talking about? I don't have a you fat call face? You yeah, but I'm like crazy ripped under You're this. You're crazy. Oh, yeah, like my true. face should be. Yeah, true, 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 true. Fishing for more compliments. Yeah. Alexi, you're hotter than Stephen Crowder, all right? Way hotter. Fuck yeah. yeah. There we go. Way hotter. Okay, anyway, back to the back to what you Based were saying. Based on Dua Lipa or bad. You're way hotter than Stephen I, I actually take that back now. Because I saw a picture of Gal God, 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 God. Uh huh. And I was like, oh, she's hot. I'm like, why? Like, you know, I should, I should have some. Uh, you should have a, uh, yeah. a consistency in my ability. Yes. Yeah. Wait, you've, you've you you just listed the two most beautiful women. That's on the what planet. I'm saying. I'm saying they're both beautiful. No, he saw the picture of the fucking shower photo of her that it was going. No, 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 I no said, he sent no, me. I that sent and that I said no. Nope, sorry. No, he said no. Nope, sorry. Then he showed me, and I said, Alexa, look in the background on the shower. That's then why he saw I know. That, I know she has. And that's and, why and I showed went, you that photo. Whoa. No, I he didn't. he did that reaction. That's why I showed that photo to you. No, I know. The lights on. <laughs> Stop! Oh, <laughs> oh, oh Jesus! Uh, okay, yeah. So that the, yeah, the shower hot. photo changed your mind? Yeah. No, no. Well, I don't know. Everyone's nor. crazy about that. It's like what before that you assumed this person didn't have sex. Now we like, no, but it's like, but like you know now, like so how you, can you always it. knew. What do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> you can imagine it more. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, no, it is hot. <laughs> okay, good. Wow, dude, brave, <laughs> brave. Oh, did you see this? No. What about now? What about now? It's a attractive person. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> a, it's so hard. It's so hard for him to admit. Yeah, why? He's never. Done. I know why. Because she's yeah, an Albanian yeah. nationalist, <laughs> and so am I. Little, <laughs> to, little does he know. Yeah, because you're all Turks. Yeah, oh, well, everyone's <laughs> Turks. Uh, so, so are the Serbs. Is so unbearable, or in the workplace, for example, is because it's chronic, it's systemic. If you have a boss or a supervisor, I hope example, Steven you still this have to go in the next There's day. The real problem there is you I have just to feel face like it that bully him. every He's, single day. There's no way to get away from it. I think he lives with himself every day, so that's like torture enough for him. You know what I mean? He He knows. He, this is like a also a deeply insecure man. You know what I mean? Deeply and undesirably insecure man. That's a big defining factor for me. Since the beginning of Steven Crowder's career, his main mission has always stayed the same, to provoke. Only nowadays, he's doing it under the transparent guise of pseudo-intellectualism, as he desperately longs for approval from a purely reactionary crowd. He doesn't possess the talent needed to make it in the entertainment industry the usual way, so instead, he had to find another way in by misrepresenting data, spreading lies, and bankrolling hatred. I personally believe these efforts are a calculated- I'm shocked he didn't put the bisexual Mr. Hyde in here. That sounds like a great bit. He, he has talked about it. He's like when bisexual Mr. Hyde rears his ugly head in college. That's what he said. He had like, like he a- has his own- Yeah. He said he, he went through a phase in college. What? Yeah. That explains a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a phase. You know what I mean? 
way to cover up his own insecurities and just be taken seriously for once in his life. Even when it means limiting his debates to unprepared 19 year olds, being a contrarian edgelord for attention, and destroying every professional relationship he's ever had. It's not a compliment when I say Stephen is consistent in his beliefs, meaning he seems to live by all the horrendous shit he preaches on his garbage <laughs> radio show. And where has it gotten him? Hated by all his peers and estranged from his former partner. From the information we have, it looks like Stephen ruined his own marriage on account of treating his wife like property when he thinks he can get away with it. Hillary appears to have endured his abuse for years and is still facing the wrath of Stephen's words publicly like when he threatened to release her mental health records if she didn't back off. This is a person he's been devoted to for the past decade. If he doesn't respect her enough to not attack her on a massive platform, why so should he be given any level of respect <laughs> by anyone? Steven Crowder is someone who should never be taken like, seriously. See, he's in shape, but fat face. Yeah. Interesting. See what I'm saying? But I he, think he also does it to himself with his like neck beard. Because he doesn't have a chin. Uh, he doesn't have a jawline. So he has just to own it like Bashar al-Assad, you know? Just go out there strong. <laughs> was that the first person you thought of? <laughs> I'm always thinking about the Dr. Bashar al-Assad, the line of Syria. <laughs> And his chin, <laughs> and his apparent chin. lack thereof. <laughs>